Everybody and welcome back to a brand new epic Super Tuesday live stream. We got results out of several states. We already actually have results out of Florida. Polls there closed about nine minutes ago, but nevertheless, we are ready to go. We have a very important Ohio Senate primary to cover that is going to be neck and neck, most likely razor thin. We've got Illinois. We've got down ballot races there. Arizona as well, the state we're going to end on with that primary, very key state this November. How is Donald Trump doing? How is his enthusiasm going? We're going to be covering all of it as the results come in, but guys, do me a big favor and like the stream down below. Also, subscribe to the channel. We want to hit 175,000 subscribers, possibly tonight. We've got less than 1,000 to go. You guys can help me out by liking the stream down below, subscribing to the channel, sharing the link as well to people who might want to be, you know, keeping up with this election analysis. And we have results out of Florida. Now, keep in mind, this is the early vote. This is the mail-in vote mainly, not even just early vote. And Donald Trump with a commanding lead in Florida over Nikki Haley, who's already dropped out. A lot of these voters were probably voting by mail before the dropout. She's going to fall down into the low double digits, possibly even single digits, before the night is over. Ron DeSantis, yes, he dropped out, but it is his home state. Howard Dean won his home state after dropping out. Ron DeSantis is at 4%, not even, and that's the mail-in vote. When we get to the uh, election day vote, Donald Trump is going to see a massive surge out of the sunshine state of Florida. Ohio, 
Polls are still not closed yet. They're going to close shortly. You got a very key uh, Senate race here between Matt Dolan, Frank LaRose, who's probably going to lose coming a distant third, and Bernie Moreno. Those top two candidates, you have Trump endorsed Bernie Moreno. You also have career rhino Matt Dolan, but he's been the one with all the money. His messaging's actually been not that bad. Does he have a shot at winning? We'll have to see. But then we have Illinois. We'll be watching some of the down-ballot races. Is Darren Bailey going to be able to knock off establishment Republican Mike Bost? Is it possible? I think Trump made a mistake when he endorsed Mike Bost, but I still think Darren Bailey's got a decent shot at victory. We have yet to really determine how that race is going to go. Also, we have the Kansas primary. It's kind of a little bit boring. I mean, obviously, Trump's going to win all these states, but we will watch Donald Trump's margins in all of them. There's no Democrat primary in Florida. They canceled it because the Democrats are in disarray. And because of it, there's a lot of down-ballot races, too, that are taking place across the state. School boards, you name it. Republicans are sweeping the board. It's insane what's going on there. So we'll have really yet to see but you have the vote in Hillsborough County. You have all these counties pouring their votes in already. Donald Trump with 76.4% of the vote. And a lot of that is mail-in vote. A lot of that is early vote as well. Some even before Haley even dropped out. Now it is a closed primary. That is true. But still, we will watch the results as they pour in throughout the night. And we'll get to your super chats as well um, on top of that. So... Miku Huntu Forex bots says, I guess I'll vote for Bernie. I heard he trashed Trump, though. What's that about? Also, the MAGA takeover isn't complete. We still have Mike DeWine. Well, DeWine will have to be dealt with via term limits. But still, um, in terms of Moreno trashing Trump, that was probably, you know, five, ten years ago um, where J.D. Vance arguably did the same thing. I'm not too worried about that in terms of how he would operate as a U.S. senator. Um, he has had some iffy political views over time, but he also has been less ideological back then as well. That's in stark contrast for somebody with a record that's proven to be weak like Matt Dolan, but still it's going to be a close race. Uh, regardless, we need to win that Senate seat this November, regardless walk talk 21 says, Hey rep thoughts on the bull moose progressivism. If Roosevelt had won in 1912, how different would he have governed over Wilson between Roosevelt and Trump, who would you say you're more of a fan of? Well, I'd say probably Trump over the two. Um, in terms of Roosevelt versus Wilson, I you know, it's a historical question. I guess we could dive into that. I mean, there's probably some things that they would do differently, especially in regards to foreign policy. Um, somebody in chat probably could answer that question a little bit better than I could, though. But I would have preferred Roosevelt to Wilson. Explorer Bear says any bets Maricopa would go to Haley. It's not going to go to Haley. Trump is going to win the primary in Arizona, but there's a large share of the vote there that voted early, so Haley will not have the worst performance in the world. Cole of Centauri said, I reminded my brother to vote in Ohio. Thanks for keeping me posted. Well, thank you for the super chat. M says, I've registered my grandmother and a coworker so they could vote for Trump. Everybody must do their part. Well, thank you for doing your homework. Somebody did it. We've got 1,500 other people in chat. If they did what you did, we're not going to lose this election. That I can tell you because it's, it's very important. So 35% of the vote is in. Trump might crack a million votes in Florida statewide in this primary. Haley in the early vote isn't even cracking 20%. The election day vote, she's going to do far, far worse. In some counties, she's not even cracking. She's 5% in Hendry County. Um, that's insanity, what we're seeing there. Duval County, which you'd expect her, if she's going to be doing anywhere you know, well, it'd be that county. She's at 15%, not doing too well. We have nothing in from Miami-Dade, nothing in from Palm Beach, not a lot in from the Panhandle west of Tallahassee. Alachua County, some people said that'd be Haley's best county. She's only at 22% in the early vote there. So not doing too well. We got 15 minutes before polls close in Ohio. We're covering Super Chats. We're covering Florida. We got a long night ahead of us. We're going to be getting to it. Might be a stream that goes on for three or four hours, but we'll see. Leon Alfaro says, what could we do to avoid what happened in 2020? Get out and vote. And uh, if you are concerned about the integrity, you should become a poll watcher. 
If you've got the time on your hands, you know, feel free to do so. There's plenty of different steps you can take, and that would definitely lead a lot more people into believing and, and having more faith in the integrity of the election system. So Florida, this primary, Donald Trump, and Democrats had no primary, by the way. So you did have some Democrats registering as Republicans ahead of this too, um, even though it's a closed primary, but still... Most of the voters here are registered Republicans. That is very true. And Donald Trump is winning a the lion's share of the vote here. He's going to take Florida by a decent amount this November. Ron DeSantis also, he's, he's, he's getting not even 4%. Obviously, he dropped out, but still technically so did Haley. But a lot of the vote that's in was before Haley decided to drop out. So there's that. Let's see. The Apollo TD said, I'm a political agent for the Tories in UK. Surely Trump supporters need to get out and canvas door to door to convince undecideds in swing states. Well, absolutely. Door knocking, phone banking, etc. definitely helps. CCM28 says, donated to the Trump campaign today. Well, everybody should. Um, and it's probably, you know, beneficial. If everybody that sends a super chat that can afford to match their donation with the Trump campaign, feel free to do so. You want to send in a $5 super chat, have a question that you want me to answer, that's fine. Go on Trump's website, shoot him a 5-2 if you can afford it. Um, it definitely would help out him as well because we need as many people on deck donating. It doesn't mean Trump's broke or that the cash advantage uh, is severely in the negatives for him, or at least Biden has a massive cash, ad cash advantage, which does he have a cash advantage? Yes. Is it as big as some people say it is? No, it is not. Um, but every donation helps to Trump regardless, every single donation. But we got Ohio closing their polls in 12 minutes. That's huge. Donald Trump so far, almost 400,000 votes in a meaningless primary um, in the state of Florida. And we have a lot more votes. What came in? Miami-Dade? Yes, it did. Donald Trump with 85% of the early vote in Miami-Dade, a county that likely he will end up flipping into his column this November. Cole of Centauri says, remember to indict and persecute that like button. That is true. Make sure you guys smash that like button. We have 2,000 live viewers, but only 400 likes. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Let's hit 175K. That is a big milestone. We're less than 900 subs from it. Hit that subscribe button so we can get there. Hit the like button. Let's do this. We got Ohio closing their polls in 11 minutes. We've got Illinois closing their polls in 40 minutes. We've got Arizona closing their polls in a few hours. But most of the results will be counted from what I've heard now, it's going to take a long time to count the remaining, uh, you know, whatever voting, uh, whatever votes are left on the table from that point, and that we know, but they should count faster than usual in Arizona. Kansas, I mean, Trump's going to win that by a lot regardless. So either way, early vote, mail-in vote in Florida, Donald Trump still doing relatively well. He possibly could end up cracking a million votes at the end of the night. But yeah, Trump is going to win every county in Florida. He's going to end up doing better than he did in Georgia, probably when all the votes are counted. We have nothing out of the panhandle just yet. You know, we have some of these counties down here. Miami-Dade, though, Trump is doing, you know, numbers in Miami-Dade. That's insane right there. So we'll see. And he gains and Haley falls as 49% of the votes are in. Everybody remember to like the stream down below. Let's hit 1,000. We're at 640. We could do it. We got 2,000 people in chat. Like the stream down below. Subscribe and hit that bell. We're going to be on the road to 175K. And when we hit that, the next stop up is going to be 200,000 subs. So let's get there. Johnny Hartdog says three things. One, it's great that Republicans are finally getting on board with ballot harvesting and early voting, but they're still falling short with reaching younger voters. Well, We'll have to see. I think with Trump on the, the ticket, it's going to be a little bit easier than, than it would be if he's not on the ticket. That I can tell you because the younger Republicans, well, those are the people that tend to be more inside of Donald Trump's camp, even in a primary. 
Uh, it's a weird kind of, uh, you know, bell curve you see. The younger voters, they're the ones with Trump. The stragglers are some of the millennials and the, the Gen Xers. And then the boomers are also pretty much on board with Trump as well. America First uh, Conservatives 45 says, do you think Republicans hold on to the 19th district in New York? I think they will. I think that district has actually uh, been redrawn to be a little bit more Republican leaning. So there's that. But Trump continues to gain with 52% of the vote in Collier County, 61% and Donald Trump with 73% of the vote there. Miku Huntu Forex bots says there would usually be Democrat advocates outside the polling station with voting sheets, but not this year and no coup restriction sign of the times. Well, it depends where you're at. We'll see if, if, if you are the super chatter that was talking about voting in Ohio, that's probably a good thing. Um, but again, they're kind of just that disillusioned and they don't really have a competitive primary, so they might just be staying out of it. So who knows? The Apollo TD says, remember to donate knock door knock and campaign also for state and down ballot races too. Shame I can't as I'm not a U.S. citizen. MAGA GOP local council representative competence means Trump's approval goes up. Arguably the case. Yeah, arguably the case. Chris Hennessy says panhandle, does, panhandle doesn't close until 8 because they're in the central time zone. That is technically true. Someone in chat asked where they could find the Discord. Sign up via RedEaglePolitics.com. $5 a month. That's the only active official Discord that we have. So Trump is at 78%. He's got over 507,000 votes. America First Conservatives 45 says, how close does Trump come in New York? I think he probably could make it in the lower double digits. Uh, Colt Mechanicus says, Trump has support from ethnic and religious minorities and less educated whites maxed out, uh, but they struggle with educated whites, how to fix it. Well, if they really are, um, I, I don't believe they're really maxed out with less educated white voters. I'll say that. I think that um, in order to fix it, I think you just have to focus on the issues and get enough people out to vote because the math is is definitely on Trump's side. I don't think he's maxed out with any particular demographic, uh, one could say, but you got to focus on the ones that are the most movable and the most uh, able to get out and vote as well. Johnny Hartdog says, with Trump trouncing in the polls, the GOP is getting their act together and Rhino's leaving. What is your biggest concern about the 2024 election? What is the one thing that can botch it up? Well, um, definitely, I've said for the longest time, I think Trump can still win with a conviction, but you know they're going to try in the media. You know they're going to try with all these baseless lies and hoaxes. They're already doing that with the, uh, with the what's it called, the, the whole bloodbath hoax. You know, it's going to get worse. They're going to become more unhinged, and some people will buy the nonsense. And also, yeah, the vote operation thing is important. We got to get people voting early. We don't need any people staying home during snowstorms on Election Day that cost us a couple states, you name it. So there's that. So 57% of the, or uh, yeah, 57% of the vote is in Trump leading uh, 78 to 16 so far in Florida. A lot of this is early vote, but still, I mean, election day vote is also on the way. Uh, the one county that's 95% in shows Haley at 8%. The second largest county that's all the way in Duval, which has not been the most Republican friendly county in recent years due to, you know, growth in Jacksonville, not enough to offset the rest of the state, but still Donald Trump is at 82%. Haley's only at 12 so Duval County, even though that's all the way in, Trump is still performing very respectably in the county of Duval. Uh, the Apollo TD says, reckon she, he will win in Montana. Seems unprepared. I believe he's going to win. He's been spending a lot of money efficiently and effectively, and they've got a lot more money on the way. Presidential year, I think she, he wins. Johnny Hartdog says, I forgot the third thing. Uh, but I have a convention. Uh, uh, I have a confession. I've been subscribed. I watch every video, but been too lazy to hit the like button. Sorry, I will fix it. Well, there you go. Better late than never. Better late than never. We're almost at a thousand likes. We have twenty five hundred people in chat. Everybody, hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button as well. Hit the subscribe button. 
Uh, we are knocking on the door of 175,000 subs. If you want to use the live chat but you cannot, well, then you got to subscribe. That's the only way you can use it. So there's that like and subscribe. We got a long way to go tonight. But Florida Trump keeps gaining as more votes are counted. He's now, he's going to cross 80% in Florida. DeSantis is not even at 4%, even though it's his home state. Yes, he dropped out, but it's a little besides the point. We got five minutes, a little bit less than that, until polls end up closing out of Ohio, and we could be deciding the first competitive down ballot major primary of this election cycle between mainly Bernie Moreno and Matt Dolan. Frank LaRose's campaign was a disaster. He imploded completely. He's done. So we also don't have any results out of uh, Palm Beach County just yet either. Some of these other counties by the Everglades, nothing there. Nothing out of a lot of these panhandle counties. Some of them won't come in until the polls close in uh, 8 o'clock because the polls do close a little bit later in some of these places. There's that. So either way, Trump continues to gain in terms of his vote total in the state of Florida. But if you guys have any super chats, feel free to send them in. Otherwise, like the stream. Let's hit 1,000 likes. We hit 1,000 likes. Let's, hit, uh, let's get it to 1,500. That's our next milestone. Hit that like button. If you haven't subbed yet, make sure to do so. Milky Way Gaming says, I will be voting for Trump but against Awful Lake. Well, that doesn't make sense. Why exactly? If, if you're not voting for Lake in Arizona, you'd be voting for Ruben Gallego, who is a far-left lunatic, who is at odds with everything that Donald Trump stands for. I don't understand the rationale um, between that. If you're talking about the primary, it's one thing. You know, there's other options. I think Lake is the better option. But, uh, you know, the election in, in November, Lake has to be the one that wins that. Whether you like her or not, you got to vote. That's a vote. That's a vote in the Senate that'll be probably a top five senator. Now, if you know she doesn't win, you're going to have one of the worst five senators among the worst senators. Miku Huntu Forex Bot says, Frank LaRose reminds me of LaRose's pizza chain. I'm not familiar with it. The Apollo TD says, VP John James or JD Vance, Michigan is important. I think John James is going to stay in Congress, and J.D. Vance will probably stay in the Senate as well. You know, you, usually taking somebody who just won an election for the first time in their life and putting them on a ticket, that's not seen very often, but we'll have to see. Dan Bears says, we take the White House and Senate, can we hold the House? I think so. Democrats would need to net four or five seats and judging based off of the fact they couldn't see major gains in redistricting, I just don't see it happening. Zachary Stewart says it's crazy how much Orange and Osceola counties have moved right over the past few years. Osceola is where Disney is. Well, that's the Trump effect for you. You're seeing that. Um, your PCMD says since Trump surpassed the delegates needed, why are states still voting? Well, there's down ballot races in some of these states, but also they're not going to cancel primaries just because the delegate threshold has been hit. Trump is still going to be campaigning. Uh, Matthew Foxtrot says, do you have any thoughts on New York trying to bankrupt Trump? I also run a VPN through Atlanta and have seen multiple ads saying not voting or third party is a vote for Trump. Thoughts? Well, they're scared. I think it's a good thing if you're seeing the latter. Um, in terms of the courts trying to bankrupt Trump, they're trying to do it. It's a distraction. They couldn't beat him. Uh, fair and square. They needed these these garbage investigations and kangaroo court verdicts in order to go out there and try to weaken Trump in the uh, the public eye. It's not really working too well for them because Donald Trump is still winning. So we'll have to see what happens when, when it's all said and done. But it's 6.30 Central Time at 7.30 on the East Coast and polls have closed out of the state of Ohio. So we are waiting on the first results in the very competitive Senate primary. Whoever wins it will be the nominee to take on Sherrod Brown this November. So we will see what happens on that front. So there's that. Now, Trump on the ballot, you would think, would give Moreno a boost. It's not a guarantee, but it's a big test. If Moreno wins, I think Donald Trump does deserve a lot of credit because the polls were neck and neck. But we'll see. 
At the same time, Dolan did run an extraordinary campaign, even if he is a rhino, and that's why this is even a competitive race to begin with. So we'll have to see it when it's all said and done. But uh, it's a big, big test for the primary. Keep in mind, Trump's last endorsee in Ohio for a Senate race only got 32% in a crowded field. That would not be enough here tonight. But still, Donald Trump himself was not on that ballot. So that does kind of need to be taken into account. So we will see. But Florida, 69% of the vote is in in the state of Florida. Trump is at 80%. Haley is down there at 15. A lot of that vote for her is kind of a little early. Lover of Green says, have you heard of D-Day Cobra? He's a MAGA YouTuber who reacts to various news clips. If possible, you should guest star on one of his streams. They are wild. His fan base, the 199, would appreciate it. Well, maybe. I don't know. I've never heard of that guy before. Saga says, hey, Rep, thoughts on Rich Barris's latest comment about how Haley Republicans have muddled voter rules for at least two cycles and will drain RNC cash for years to clean and could damage us in November. Um, I did not hear him say that in terms of how I would react to that. I feel like uh, I don't know how they would damage us in November if they were never Republicans to really begin with. But I guess you could say in terms of getting them out to vote, you are getting some people out to vote who aren't actually Republicans. So it is important to kind of look at the voter files and understand how long people have been registered. If they're registering right before a primary, maybe they're not actually a a Republican voter that's going to turn out for Trump. And, you know, we've seen the opposite with Republicans crossing over into the Democrat primaries, not as much though as the inverse, but still that is true. We'll have to see what happens. I don't, and, uh, I don't really know how it's going to affect things in November. But 71% of, of the vote is in. Trump is at 80% so far. A lot of this is early votes still. Very few counties are all the way in. The ones that are most of the way in, Donald Trump is doing a hell of a lot better in them. He's going to get close to a million votes in the state of Florida, which is absolutely huge. Ohio, we're still waiting on some results out of the Senate primary as well. And this is probably going to be a very competitive primary. And it's it's very div- I mean very divisive primary. They don't clear the fields on the Republican side. They only do it on the Democrat side, but we've been getting better at that though. The Apollo TD says what policies do MAGA and Trump need to get more young middle class women voting GOP housing, more bursaries for nurses in college child uh, tax credits. Well, They need to just have an agenda, period, and obviously you're not going to win every single demographic. You're just not. So I do think pro-family policy is good. You know, that stuff is important, but it doesn't mean that the main focus needs to be on a demographic that is not really going to be that consequential for one and for two is not really all that malleable after a certain point. So there's that. I will be back in a second. We will be going to take a quick break. But by the time I come back in about one or two minutes, hopefully we will have some results out of Ohio. So I'm going to teleport out of here real quick. But don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Stay tuned.
Okay, everybody, we are back, and we don't have any results out of the state of Ohio just yet. But uh, we do have more Super Chats as well. We're going to be reading some of them. The Poo Janger says, I'm critical of Trump's Second Amendment positions and his willingness to fund Israel, but he still is the only hope this country has on a national scale. I feel like many people feel that way. The purity tests are, you know, one thing, but at the end of the day, if he doesn't win, we see what happens to this country. And that, I feel like, is of the utmost importance right now, more so than any other potential criticism. And so far, Matt Dolan is leading, but, you know, that is a lot of Franklin County. Uh, That should be one of his better counties. That is where Columbus is. This is mainly early vote. If those are the numbers he's cracking, it'll be interesting to see if that's going to be enough to carry him the rest of the state. I'm not entirely sure it will be. We can go back and check Florida, where Donald Trump has an 80 to 15 lead. That lead there is looking a lot like the primary last week out of the state of Georgia, where he ended up having a uh, a very, very large lead there as well. But still, uh, we will see what happens. Um, Erm McGursh says, D-Day Cobra is Geeks and Gamers. Very good channel. I feel like I've heard of them before. Marilyn Degatti 83 says a solution to the Haley problem. Ask them if they voted for Trump or are going to vote for Trump. There's that. Jimmy Payne says, where are your thoughts about Stephanie Lambert being arrested recently for exposing, for exposing election uh, redacted with uh, voting machines? I have no idea. I have not seen anything about that. The Sandwich Man says national polling for Trump was bad today. Thoughts? Well, we could check the polling average right now, and he's still up by the same margin he was up by yesterday. Um, In fact, the one poll I did see with him losing was from Main Street Research, and those were the same polls that had Democrats winning every race in the midterms by like 10 to 15 points. So I wouldn't really say that Trump being down two in the popular vote in that poll is a bad thing to begin with. So there's that. We look at Ohio, we have 1% in, you know, this is really not a lot of votes to determine the outcome. We need more counties to fill in, in the state of Ohio, before we can actually uh, extrapolate anything from these results that we have. So yeah, Florida, Gagston County, 55% of the vote is in, and it's a drunk county, just like the the, uh, place in Oklahoma in the primary where they put in a bunch of vote for everybody. They have 16% for Vivek Ramaswamy and Chris Christie's at 15.1%. That is something that's uh, it's very confusing, but hopefully they're going to fix that momentarily. We'll see what happens when it's all said and done. In fact, Tallahassee, which is where the governor's mansion is, DeSantis still there is cracking 7%. Of the vote. I think that's his best county of the night. Technically Gagston, but I think Seminole Seminole might also be drunk. I, I don't know what's going on there. Um, yeah, because Haley and DeSantis have the same vote total. That's impossible, uh, virtually, for them to both have the same vote total uh, regardless. So we'll see. But we have a lot of votes left to tabulate. A lot of votes left in Ohio even. It seems like the Senate primary has almost as many votes as the presidential race. So there's that. But these voters are disproportionately Haley voters. That's important to understand as well, because Haley's not getting 32% um, statewide. So there's that. Um, Patrick Klosser says, make videos for competitive states and their futures. We'll be covering that. Unknown Fusion says, how was your break? Was it a piss break? It was a water break. Had to get more water. It's going to last me the end of the stream, hopefully. Mark Kovic says, Go Moreno, how's it going, rep? Everything's going well so far. Uh, Can't complain. We'll see what happens on the uh, primary front when it's all said and done. But uh, Moreno, he's there. He's at uh, 34%. But you have one county. This is early vote. Haley's getting 30-some percent. If, if those are the numbers, Moreno's probably doing fine statewide. I probably would say that he'd be the favorite if those are the, the only early numbers. But until we get some major ticket splitting, 
between the presidential race where you have a lot of Trump uh, Dolan voters until that comes, which it could it could happen. I would say Moreno's probably the favorite right now. Um, the Apollo TD says Thune or Cornyn, preferably Thune. Well, I hope it's somebody that's neither of those two, to be honest. Base Cat says, yeah, we had a little alert there on the on the on the stream from the from some PC thing. Uh, Base Cat says you start these streams too early. Well. You know, people say that, but I'm just covering results as they come in. And then if I start the streams too late, then there's also problems because it's like, why are you starting too late? So I do a mix of both. I assume your super chat's being sarcastic and mocking the people that say that I stream too late. But still, just leave me alone, says with Navarro going to prison in Miami today, Miami-Dade should go to Trump. Well, I think Miami-Dade is going to Trump regardless. I mean... In the general election, yeah, I think it will go to Trump. It'll be a Trump county. So let's see. We could check the race. No new votes here on Decision Desk. No new votes. We'll see. Some people say Moreno's in the lead, but they might be looking at another website. They're going to fill those results in on New York Times momentarily. So we might as well just stay put and see what exactly happens we got a long way to go tonight. We've got 17 minutes until the polls close out of the state of Illinois as well. So there is that. We have how many people in chat? We have 3,000 people watching. Everybody hit that like button. Let's get to 1,500 likes. Let's get to 2,000 likes. Anyways, subscribe to the channel. Let's hit 175K. We are knocking on the door. That is a big milestone. The next milestone on the channel will be 200,000 subscribers, so make sure we can get closer to that goal as well. Let's go back to Florida. 78% of the vote is in, and we're not even an hour after polls are closing in Florida. So you're seeing that. LinRx52 says, sorry if you already projected. What is your projection on Ohio's Moreno? I haven't made a prediction yet or a projection I said it's going to be a very close race according to polling and other metrics. And now, early vote out of Stark County, Matt Dolan with 40% of the vote there as well. So he is running up the score in that county, which is kind of surprising. Donald Trump is at 71%. So that's early vote. More votes come in, the better Trump is likely going to do. Warren County, that's suburban Cincinnati. Trump is um, at 74% in that county. But for some reason, we don't have anything in the Senate race yet. And we do. Moreno is up in Warren County. That is huge. Suburban Cincinnati, the fact that he's doing well in suburban Cincinnati is relatively telling. But still, we have a long, long way to go out of the state of Ohio. Uh, but it is a very close race so far. But this is early vote. If Moreno does better on election day, even though he wasn't surging, that's still very good news for uh, Bernie Moreno that he's this close in the early vote. So we'll see. Supreme Leader Admirable uh, Alexander... Kolchak says, big fan, uh, Chank, what's your opinion of the Armenian genocide? So I guess he's just trying to bait another Chank impression out of me, which has pretty much been retired on this channel for several years now, but uh, uh, it is what it is. Uh, thank you for the super chat, uh, Supreme Leader. But we're 2% of the vote in here in the state of Ohio. Florida is now up to 83%. Haley's vote share is down below 15% of the vote. They're still, uh, they, have not, they haven't fixed that drunk county just yet, Gagston County, where everybody's at 15% of the vote. Mike Oxard says Florida counts their votes fast. They do. Um, we're still waiting on some election day votes, but they are busy counting those right now. But they do put the votes in and report them relatively quickly, which is very good compared to what a lot of other states do. So we know that. 
So we'll go back to Ohio, where now you have Trumbull County in, but we don't have Trumbull County in in the, uh, in the Senate race. Or let's see, do we have any more votes? Oh, you do have Morgan County. So that's a very white working class, rural, Trump-friendly county. Early vote, Moreno's already at 50% of the vote. So he's running up the score there so far. And uh, we don't have any votes in for the for the presidency out of that county. So I don't know what exactly the New York Times is doing, but Trump is definitely going to see a, a major set of victories, delegate halls tonight. That we know. We still do have a long way to go. Illinois is closing their polls in about 12 minutes. Biden so far is below 90 in Ohio as well. Um, and they've counted a lot more of the Democrat vote there in the state than they've counted the Republican vote. So that's important to uh, keep tabs of as well. And that's with down ballot races being on the same uh, day. So Ashland County, the early vote there is going for Matt Dolan. That is a very red county as well. So we'll have to see what happens there. But this is going to be a close primary regardless of whatever happens. Um, some people said the map is too small. Well, I could zoom in. Um, you guys can see it there. Now you have another county in here. Williams County. Dolan is up in the early vote there, but not by much. So if the election day vote is favoring Moreno more so than Dolan, then Dolan is going to probably lose from what we've seen so far. Now, is it early? Yes, it's very early. I, I don't know what happened. You had a county report votes and then... Uh, it's missing from the from the map now all of a sudden. I wonder why that exactly is. But nevertheless, the counties that are in are in for Matt Dolan so far, except for Warren County, which is in for Moreno, that is by the Cincinnati area. Now, Pickaway County, 28% of that vote is in. Dolan with a lead in Pickaway County there which is, you know, the outskirts of Columbus. Pickaway is a more Republican county, though. It's a more pro-Trump county than Franklin County is, but still you're seeing that there early on. 3% of the vote is in Matt Dolan with a three percentage point lead over Bernie Moreno, but it is early. And now you have another uh, county in Moreno winning the early vote so far out of Auglaize County, by 3% there. So you're seeing that. And we have a lot more votes in what is going on. Everybody just reported at once. Um, Moreno winning some counties. He's winning Lucas County, which is where Toledo is. He's winning Trumbull County sizably so far. Um, but but Matt Dolan is leading statewide. Frank LaRose is up in a couple of counties somehow for one reason or another too. So you got a lot going on here. It is a race that is decided right now. Um, it's a less than 200. Oh, and Bernie Moreno takes the lead. Look at that. Moreno takes a one-point lead as more votes come in. Mahoning County, that is a big Obama-Trump county, and that county is moving to the right, and that county has given Bernie Moreno a lead so far. He is uh, up here. He is winning so far. Mago de Oz says, do you hear a judge allowed illegals to carry guns? I did not, but depending on where that judge is from, it does not exactly surprise me. But so far, the more votes that come in, we have 7% of the vote in. Donald Trump is up in the state of Ohio by quite a bit, and honestly, so is Bernie Moreno. He is up by a little bit uh, less, to say the very least, but he is winning. He is winning so far. He is up at 38.2. Frank LaRose is actually winning some counties, believe it or not. I'm kind of surprised that he is winning some counties, uh, mainly the counties in the southeastern part of the state. It's very early on. They also put the votes from Morgan County back in that went missing earlier. And Moreno has a lead so far. We're going to be seeing Illinois close their polls in about 10 minutes. We'll see. Miku Huntu Forex Bots is going on forecast. Twitter all says Bernie has it. Well, you know what? You don't want to count your chickens before you hatch. You got a long way to go. But uh, Trump in Florida cracking 80%. The panhandle 
Those polls are going to close. You're going to see those uh, parts get reported pretty soon. They're going to call the state for Trump. We already know Trump's going to win it easily. He's going to expand that 75-point margin even. Uh, But in terms of Ohio, they projected Ohio for Trump. No surprise there. He's getting close to three-quarters of the vote as well. Um, You see that. And in terms of the Senate race, it's early. You know, we don't have anything in from Cleveland. We still have a lot of uh, Columbus not in there or, or Cincinnati as well. But Bernie Moreno so far with 38% of the vote. Donald Trump on the ticket, if he wins big, I think a lot of it has to do with Trump on the ticket because in the latest polls, Bernie Moreno was trailing Matt Dolan in like four out of the last five final polls. Uh, it was a close race, but still... If Moreno wins, I think this can be attributed directly to the Trump effect. I will say that. Now, it's still we're still far off from declaring a winner. We've got 7% of the vote in so far, um, but we have yet to determine what's going to happen. So, yep, uh, it's definitely going to be somewhat close. Lorraine County, Matt Dolan got some votes there. But again, he's barely winning the early vote. So he's got a bank on the election day vote coming in strong for Matt Dolan, which usually the election day vote is more Trump friendly. So is that usually is that really what you want to bank on? I'm not entirely sure it would be. Uh, we have yet to see here. But Moreno in some of these counties, he's you know, getting in the 50s, which is just absolutely absurd. It's ridiculous. He's doing that well in some of these counties in such a close race. And then you look at the ones Dolan, uh, you know, is doing well in. There's a few of them, but is it really going to be enough to make up that difference? That's going to be really difficult to see. Also, LaRose running up the score in a lot of these counties is a little bit interesting. I don't know why. It's a little bit of an, an anomaly there. And he's winning another one. So I guess he just might have a a unique point of strength in that region. But still, this is a 200 vote difference between Moreno and Dolan with 10% of the vote in. We have a long, long way to go. That is true. Um, We will see what happens. We'll check on Florida. The polls in the rest of the state will end up closing in about six minutes from now. So if you guys make sure, uh, if you're watching, like the stream, let's hit 2,000 likes. we got 4,000 live viewers. Hit that subscribe button as well. So you guys got to make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss a future video or stream. Also hit the bell for notifications for that as well. But Ohio, this Senate race, this is probably the most important, most contested race of the night. So we will see. We will see what happens when it's all said and done. But uh, Matt Dolan, Bernie Moreno, Bernie Moreno with a slight lead, but it's 10%. The election day vote, you would think it's pro Moreno, but Dolan did get the momentum towards the end. So it's a little iffy, but Dolan also got the momentum ahead of 2022 in that primary, and he ended up falling into third place, and J.D. Vance won by a wider margin than expected. So you see that. We'll see. We will see. But yeah, make sure you guys like and subscribe. We're on the verge of 175,000. You want to be a part of the first 175K. We're about 800 away from our next milestone. So make sure you guys like and subscribe. But still, we've already counted 100,000 plus votes here too, which is really saying something. Um, Oh, and Dolan retakes the lead. Where did that come from? Where did that come from exactly? They're tied in Fulton County, but I don't know if there was another county that reported more ballots. Where is that coming from? I think it was the, the Columbus area or Hamilton County. Yeah, Hamilton County, which is where Cincinnati is. Dolan winning Cincinnati so far, but barely retaking the lead. That's interesting. Mike Oxarts is would LaRose voters go more to Moreno or Dolan? I honestly think it's a 50-50 split. I mean, the voters in real life in these counties, probably more Moreno, but uh, your 
you know, GOP establishment hacks, probably more to Dolan, yet a little bit of a mix supporting them for sure. And it is true, LaRose has a lot of name recognition because he is a statewide elected official. He's won big statewide before, but he banked on that working out and being his entire campaign. Did that play out for him? No. He then tries to tie himself to these long shot referendums. They fail. They blow up in his face. It makes him look bad. Now it's just like it's over for him. So he falls. Moreno gains traction. Trump endorses Moreno, which kind of also cripples LaRose. And then Dolan sees a surge. He's got a lot of money. He is running ads talking about immigration, which is smart of him because the more people focus on that issue, the more they end up winning, it seems, because it's such a pressing issue that needs a lot of attention. So even a rhino like Matt Dolan in a Trumpian state like Ohio focusing on immigration, he was able to at least, obviously it's not over, but he's at least competitive so far. He's winning. I don't know if he's going to win, but we'll see. We have a long, long way to go before we have finally decided the winner here. But uh, yeah, Moreno, Trump was going to initially go to Arizona from what I've heard, campaign. He said, no, we're going to stop um, in the northeastern Ohio area or wherever and do a rally for Bernie Moreno. And he did a rally for him. And if it's really close, you could really say a lot of that is due to Donald Trump and his influence. Uh, Jared Walsh, thank you for becoming a new member. Thank you, Jared. So we'll go back to Florida. Trump is at 800,000 votes. A lot of votes still to count. That's going to be very Trump favorable, one could say. I mean, there, there are some counties that are all the way in. Palm Beach is all the way in. But there's a lot of counties that are not quite in just yet. And that is true. And they're going to heavily favor Donald John America. He's going to go out there, finish with over 900,000 votes in Florida, possibly get close to a million. Ron DeSantis, who's the sitting governor, he's only at 3.9%. I know he dropped out, but Haley did too, even though a lot of the Haley vote probably came before she dropped out. But still... Trump in a very good position with 800,000 votes cast. He's doing better than he did in most late primaries after his opponents dropped out in 2016. He's doing better than a lot of the primary results out of the 2020 election where he was running unopposed in a lot of these states. The fact that he's only at 72 in Ohio, that margin's going to increase. Uh, this also has got to be a glitch. There's no way Haley's winning Shelby County and Vivek is outrunning Trump. That's completely cap. That's a tabulation error for sure. Also, Dean Phillips is winning that county big. So again, a tabulation error um, for some reason. I don't even know if I want to trust the results out of that county for the Senate primary either. So there's that. All right, we'll see. We will see what happens. We're 13% of the way in. Moreno apparently has the lead, but that one county does have a big glitch, so we'll see. Yeah, I don't understand why people are saying that uh, Moreno is unelectable because it's like he's endorsed by Trump. He's tied to Trump. Trump's going to win Ohio by 10 plus probably. And you want to limit ticket splitting because you're not going to have people voting for Biden and then for Dolan to make up for any Trump Brown voters. You're just not. Um, but you might see, you know, a higher share of Trump voters voting for Moreno than they would vote for Dolan. I think both could win the election. I'm not saying they couldn't, but I think that uh, we'll see. We'll see. But I think Moreno is electable. I think anybody will beat Sherrod Brown with Trump on the ballot. He's very overrated. His approval rating has fallen, which is not the best indicator for Senate races, but still. I'm proud of you, says voted for Jason Palmer in the Arizona primary. He won't win, but any chance to vote against Biden is one I will take up. Love the content. Well, I assume that you're probably a holdover registered Democrat because I think only registered Democrats can vote in that primary. Um, so... I'd say that's the right move. I mean, he won American Samoa. He's doing something, right? I've never heard of the guy. I don't know what he looks like. I don't know anything about him, but 
He won American Samoa, and they called Florida for Donald Trump. Florida primary goes for Trump easily. He wins all the delegates, 125 more to his column. That we know were, you know, obviously we had to wait for the polls to close in uh, the panhandle, central time, 7 o'clock, whatever. It's done. Trump has won Florida. He's going to win the remainder of the votes in Florida. He's got it. So there you go. And he's going to win Florida in November, too, by a lot. And I don't think they put in any more votes in the panhandle, but still, they are tabulating more and more votes. And the more votes they do tabulate, Trump does better and better and better and better. Also, Illinois. The polls have closed, I believe, in Illinois. And we will wait and see what the results say. But um, down ballot, we'll be watching the race between Mike Bost and uh, in, in this in this primary with Darren Bailey, who ran for governor. So we will be watching that. Anyways, guys, like the stream down below. Like the stream. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel as well. We're at 174,000. Let's get to 175K. Like the stream, subscribe to the channel. Let's get there. But anyways, back to Ohio. We'll be uh, we'll be watching the results, but it's very very close between Bernie Moreno and Matt Dolan. The one thing in common that these voters have is that they're voting for Donald Trump in big big numbers so far. So we'll see. LaRose is lost. I think we can arguably make that projection because he's not going to win. Um, but he is winning counties, and surprisingly counties that I probably would have said he would be less likely to win. Um, not even sure how ancestrally Republican that area is either. Jeremy G says, I voted for Trump, or I voted Trump in the Arizona primary. Well, we need as many votes as we can. It shows enthusiasm. Run up the score. Let's get Trump millions and millions of more primary votes because why the hell not? So make sure you get out and vote if your state has not voted yet. I know Pennsylvania is another big close state that's going to be having a primary. Same thing with Wisconsin. That's going to be huge. But other than that, we don't have a lot of swing states that are really all that uh, remaining. So we'll see. Illinois, nothing so far. Nothing out of Illinois. Kansas... Um, I believe, yeah, most polls have closed, but some polls will be closing in 56 minutes. So we'll see. Republican liberal says plus four for Trump in Arizona. Did my part. There you go. See, this is what you do. Lead by example. Get people out to vote. Have them get people out to vote and vice versa. Create the chain reaction. We need the highest turnout that we possibly can have. Also, keep in mind, Ohio is indeed an open primary as well, and Democrats did not really see a very large turnout compared to Republicans, even though this is early vote. We know that Democrats have more of the vote share in. Biden's only at 100,000. Trump's at 125,000. So there's that. Moreno in the lead so far. He's even winning suburban Cincinnati, but it's very, very early on. The fact he's at uh, 47% in Warren County, though, is relatively encouraging. And he's also running it up in a lot of these counties over here. But even like in the middle of the state, Dolan's doing well. Now, a lot of that is early vote on both sides. So there's that. But we'll see. We'll see what happens when it's all said and done. It is very close regardless. Very, very close. And the counties that are mostly in are all over the place. So I wouldn't even read too much into this map that we see right now, right in front of us. So there's that. But yeah, we need people out and we need people voting. Arizona is going to close their polls and uh, approximately, uh, it seems like most polls close at 10 Eastern time. Some close at 9 Eastern time. So most votes are going to be reported within the first hour, apparently, from what I've heard, reports. And Arizona is Arizona. 
So I don't think we're going to wait until it's at 90% before we end the show. But uh, we will be going for at least, I, I think, like an hour after Arizona closes for sure. Mitchell Ryan says, do you think they will seize Mar-a-Lago from Trump? A bit nervous that the lawsuit will tank his campaign. Well, according to them, it's only worth like $10 million. So why would they even try to seize that when he owes $400 million? So nothing these people do is honest. Nothing these people do is consistent. They're all liars. All these cases are garbage. And everybody can see it. I've never seen a case where the banks testify on Trump's behalf. They say Trump actually undershot his estimates for his properties that he told the banks when most people, when they're trying to negotiate with banks, are supposed to lower the cost. If you applied this ruling across the board, nobody could do business in New York. They had to come out the leadership and say that this would not happen to them uh, if, in terms of these other companies if they decided to stay in New York. And it's just like, everybody knows this is sham. It's a sham. The judge is a lunatic. His wife is liking a bunch of, uh, and, and tweeting about a bunch of anti-Trump things. She's an anti-Trump, blue and on activist. That's who's controlling the justice system. That's basically all there is to it. It's just a scam. Everything is a scam that we're seeing. Everything. All the, all the anti-Trump stuff, the, the trials, the hoaxes, we've seen it for nine years, which is why we need this victory. We need this victory. Convince people. Tell people why it's bogus. Because I feel like now there's people that are like, I hate what Biden's doing to this country, but Trump's under uh, investigation. So those people will exist. I think they'll exist in lower numbers than some people may think that they exist. So... You got to kind of do your part and, uh, and and kind of get those people voting for Trump or just communicate to them how insane it is. And I think that they're banking on people not doing their research. They're banking on people just being stupid in order to stay in power. And will it work? I'm not entirely sure it will. Republican liberal says, will be interesting to see turnout in Kansas. We'll get there when we get there. We'll get there eventually. Be patient. Uh, Kansas. We, well, we do have Kansas votes. We do have votes in Kansas out of one county. Early vote. Trump is at 65%. 53 votes, though. More votes are in. So, okay. They're starting to report Trump will win Kansas fairly easily. No question there. Jared Walsh says Mike Flood or Don Bacon or both will lose their primary. Well, I don't know about Mike Flood. Don Bacon could, but because he endorsed Trump, I think it's less likely now than it was before. So we'll see. Let's uh, check the Senate race again. Okay, nothing's new. We're waiting on more results. It seems like on the uh, the outer part of the state is where Moreno's doing the best, and the, the center uh, part of the state in a lot of these deep red counties is actually where Matt Dolan is doing well. And Matt Dolan pulls ahead with Cuyahoga County. That's Cleveland. That is where Dolan's family's baseball team is, the Cleveland Indians, although Dolan and his family, they change it to the Guardians out of political correctness. Yeah, it's that Matt Dolan. Well, he is now uh, he's now taken the lead in Cuyahoga County, and he's taken the lead statewide as well. But still, seventeen percent of the vote has reported. This is an election that's only decided so far between twelve hundred votes. So we have a, a very long way to go. We have votes in out of the state of uh, Illinois. Donald Trump so far is at 73%. Again, early vote in Illinois. Donald Trump so far going to win the state in the primary that we know. Watch out for the 12th district so far. Mike Bost is winning pretty big. Um, this is early vote, but still might be over for Darren Bailey so far. Matthew Schneider says, I wish I could do something, but I live in Massachusetts and everyone I know hates him for no good reason. 
well, it's a blue state. It doesn't exactly matter. Uh, thinking of moving to Missouri and joining the seminary. Thank you for the 10, Matthew. But yeah, if you're in a blue state, changing people's minds matters less. Still get out people to vote for you. There's important races, down ballot races, you name it. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of votes there that matter and that count that you can't exactly leave off the table. So there's that. But 18% of the vote is in. Matt Dolan leads barely. He barely leads. I wouldn't anticipate him to hold that lead unless the election day vote starts coming out uh, and it starts coming out heavily for Matt Dolan. But we have yet to see if that's the case. We don't have a lot of counties that are all the way in yet. We don't even have a single county that is half of the way in yet. So it's it's a little early to really determine how the election day votes are going to go, but you would think they'd be going for Moreno more so than not. We just have yet to see. So more votes out of Kansas. Donald Trump with close to 70% of the vote there. Do we have a Democrat uh, tally out of Kansas? Biden is at 87.6. So again, 7% going uncommitted, 3.2% going for Marianne Williamson. Jason Palmer, Mr. American Samoa himself with 1.1%. A Willis is southeastern Ohio is Appalachia and very rural and Trumpy. Pretty disappointed they're going for LaRose. Voted for Bernie in Butler County today. Well, we still have a long way to go. We don't know how these counties are really going to be voting when um, the election day vote comes in. Again, this is a, a state that's an open primary, from what I understand. It's interesting to see because Democrats uh, crossing over, Democrats were spending money trying to boost Moreno because they thought he was weaker. Now, would it backfire in a general election? I believe it would. Uh, but could they be getting people out to vote for him in this primary as well? Is there that effort? Well, the Democrat area so far are, for the most part, benefiting Matt Dolan. So we really have yet to see what will exactly happen. Dolan still maintains a lead as LaRose gains. He's at almost 23% uh, percent here, getting more water as we speak, because we talk a lot on this show. We need the water, and that we are pouring right now. So, yeah, this is a very razor-thin election. It's been since we started counting votes. Uh, Bernie Moreno is down, but he's down by 159 votes. That is a handful of votes. And honestly, I have a feeling that Frank LaRose, regardless of whoever wins this, is going to be viewed as somebody who should have gotten out of the race and endorse one of the candidates. Whoever loses is going to definitely be throwing out that card on the table. They're going to be saying, what's wrong with you, LaRose? Why didn't you drop out and endorse my candidate? We're going to see a lot of that, and Moreno has taken the lead again. Moreno has taken the lead by 300 votes as more votes have come in. Delaware County surprisingly going for Moreno so far. That's, that's surprising to me. The Sandwich Man says Willis Land or Fulton is at a dead tie. That is true. Now we could check the house races uh, in some of these other these other races. You have Derek Marin, who is the Trump-backed candidate so far. He is defeating Craig Rydell in the early vote in Ohio's ninth. That is really something there um, that some people probably would have expected him to win. But uh, Rydell, he definitely kind of sunk his own campaign after he, um, you know, was trashing Trump publicly, it seems. So there's that. Um, in terms of other open races, you have, I believe, the 6th. Is it the 6th district or which district? I think it's the 13th district for the Republican side. Kevin Coughlin, he is going to be the nominee. Republicans could flip that seat. If everything goes right for them this November, that much is true. So we're, we're putting all of our eyes on the Senate race. We'll be bouncing around a little bit. You have Illinois, where Donald Trump is going to win that primary by quite a bit. 
and that we know. Um, we're also watching the Boston Bailey race, but so far Mike Bost is winning, and probably if that holds, he is going to get another term. He'll be nominated. So there's that. But we're watching Ohio. Florida's pretty much all the way done. These counties are coming in 85 to 10 plus for Donald Trump. He's getting closer and closer to cracking a million votes in Florida uh, in a primary that was not really all that contested. Ohio, this is still one that we're going to be watching uh, as the night goes on. Again, I, I, I think some of these counties have to be issuing tabulating errors because there's no way that Haley is winning the early vote in this county. And there's no way Ron DeSantis is getting 12% either. And there's no way Vivek is getting more votes than Trump in Shelby County either. So these have to be errors. There's no other way to chalk it up. But Trump's still across the board doing very well in the state of Ohio. And Moreno, as more votes have been counted, he's now expanded his lead to 700 votes. A very close election, but still... Moreno is indeed in the driver's seat. That much is true. So there's that. So don't pay attention to Shelby County. This has to be an error because they also show Dean Phillips beating Joe Biden in that county, despite the fact that Phillips is getting no more than 15% of the vote in surrounding counties. In Holmes County, I mean, that one might be more believable on the Democrat side, but I feel like they, at a minimum, have messed up the votes because Trump is getting in the 80s or 70s in the remain in the uh, surrounding counties, but for some reason there he's only at, what, 32%? So that has to be a tabulation error. They're going to have to correct that pretty quickly, and I'm sure they will, just like that one county in Florida that had Haley winning earlier. Obviously, they fixed that. It's over. Um, she didn't win that county. Uh, she didn't even come close in that county. So there's that. So the more votes that are counted in Florida, the better Donald Trump is going to do. Uh, that we know. He's already almost to 850,000 votes. Uh, he just keeps gaining. Haley keeps falling. Ron DeSantis, poor governor of the states down there below 4%. He really ran a campaign. He thought he could win the nomination. He could never win the nomination so there's that but we're waiting on more votes out of the ohio primary bernie moreno with a 0.1 percent lead kind of reminds you of the pennsylvania primary back in 2022 um, you had the candidate who was struggling in the primary but had the trump endorsement in dr oz surged in the middle didn't really get the late surge you had the more establishment choice with the big money and Dave McCormick, who um, kind of surprised some people with how well he did in, on uh, election day, and, and he still lost. And then you had the other candidate. In that race, it was Kathy Barnett, who didn't really have a clear-cut coalition, but still probably appealed more to some rural areas than uh, she had appealed to the suburban battlegrounds. So there was that. You're looking at these counties, they're filling in. Moreno's lead has expanded. He now leads by almost 2,000 votes with 20% of the vote in. So there's that. We're still waiting on uh, a lot of votes to count, but this is far from over. This is far from over, but I probably would rather want to be Moreno right now than I would want to be Dolan because this is all early vote. You would think Moreno would do better on election day. You would think that he would. If Dolan isn't doing that well and he's losing the early vote to Bernie Moreno, then it's over. And it honestly proves that he was a very overrated candidate to begin with um, if he's really struggling against somebody who supposedly, according to these people, is a weak candidate. So there's that. I mean, Trump had to stop by to do a rally for Moreno because Dolan was gaining in the polls, and it seems like that might have been enough to bail him out, and then some, and if it was enough to bail him out, it likely would be enough to bail him out against Sherrod Brown in November as well, you could say, just because of the fact that 
You know, if you're tied to Trump and that's why you're winning and Trump's on the ballot in November, he's winning the state by 10, you would think that that would make you a stronger candidate in that case. Now, if it's a special election or a midterm election, you can make an argument that it wouldn't be the case. But because Trump is on the ballot, you you easily can make this argument that Moreno is the stronger choice. I'm not saying either one of these candidates would lose to Sherrod Brown, but to say Moreno is weak or he's too much of a risk, I just don't fully buy the argument completely. So there you go. Anyways, guys, if you'd like to have any questions for me during the stream, feel free to send them in via Super Chat. Feel free to Super Chat any questions. Anyways, guys, subscribe to the channel. Let's hit 175,000 subscribers. We are knocking on the door of 175,000 subs. On top of that, make sure you like the stream. Let's hit 2,500 likes. What are you guys doing? We've got 4,500 people, not even 2,500 likes. Hit that like button down below. This is going back and forth. This is neck and neck. The Apollo TD says Rosen raised six uh, times more than Sherrod Brown or Sam Brown actually. Uh, problem? Uh, it is an issue if it continues. But she's the incumbent senator, and and he's still going through the nomination process. I still think uh, the fundraising total is going to matter a lot less because it's a presidential year. Remember in South Carolina, how much money did Democrats spend in Kentucky, in South Carolina, in all these states just for these people to outperform Biden by like 4%? I mean, it's a little different regarding Nevada because if Trump wins by 1%, he's probably not taking Sam Brown with him. But if uh, Trump is winning by 2 to 3 I think regardless of whatever spending difference, he could take Brown with him. And you look at how underfunded Laxalt was compared to uh, Catherine Cortez Mosto. She outspent him six to one. She was able to, you know, it was a neck and neck race. The snowstorm cost him the election in Reno. That we know. So let's see. But Moreno's leading. He is up. He's at 39.2%. He leads by 1.1%. We got 21% of the vote reporting. So there's that. Now, we got a long way to go, but we'll see. UNSC Connor says Joe Scarborough has to be the most insufferable condescending hack in the news right now. It's funny because he used to represent Matt Gates' congressional seat not too long ago. Um, and it's true. He absolutely is. Donald Trump broke that guy. He was actually friendly with Trump in, uh, back in the 2016 primary for a while there, but he really just broke the guy and he ended up marrying that woman that he's the co-host with who has been always a liberal and possibly that's dictating his, uh, his political views as well. But he's insufferable. He goes out there. He's like, oh, this is the, the best Biden's the most mentally intact he's ever been in his entire career. And then Biden goes out there and he confuses the president of Egypt with the president of Mexico. Branch Cavidian 19 says, what do you think are the chances of Illinois 6 being closer or even flipping in the general? I don't really think it's going to be all that close. Uh, let me see. Let's check the primary. I don't, I don't really, I don't really think it's going to be all that close. Oh, that's Ohio. I'm dumb. Okay, here we go. Let's go to, uh, yeah, it's an uncontested primary, so I can't even judge the turnout metric so far. But Donald Trump in the early vote with 76, 77% of the vote so far. So there you go. Let's see. Let's go down to the Senate race. Moreno still with the lead. Not a lot of votes have been reported, though, um, So since we last checked. And now Moreno gains even more. So he gains even more. Um, Gabster13B says, Did you hear about the woke mind virus infecting games like Seat Baby Inc.? It's everything. What's your take on it? The I, I don't know what you mean by that. Um, but yeah, it is true that they've been, uh, 
They've been inserting their own agenda into movies, into video games, into TV shows, into everything. It's a problem. Mason S. says, Hi, Rep. My uncontested election for GOP uh, Central Committee was in uh, Guernsey County, Ohio was today. Any suggestions for taking over your local GOP? Well, you have to get involved. That's a, that's a key thing you have to do. You have to get involved. You have to volunteer. You have to network with people. You have to get a position. You just have to govern as such. And, and that's how you, you move the party to where it needs to be on a few issues. And that's kind of, it's kind of the way it goes. So let's see. The Jaded Craigsman says, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves here, but who succeeds Trump in 28? Contrary to what our blue cult thinks, Trump is not going to be uh, come an American Sulla or Caesar. So basically you're saying that the Democrats are wrong when they say Trump is going to declare himself a uh, dictator, which is it's true. They're, they're wrong. Um, but yeah, I don't know who's going to succeed him. It depends who runs. We, we talk about a lot of different people. A lot of people are talking about Vivek Ramaswamy. Some people are even saying J.D. Vance might go for it. Some people are saying Josh Hawley will go for it. And some people are saying it's going to be Tucker Carlson or a businessman or somebody that we just don't know. So we really have yet to see what's going to happen on that front. But uh, a lot of vote left to count. But Moreno is winning so far. We'll see. Let's check Illinois. So Trump has uh, 49,000 votes so far. Uh, Cook County is 44% in. Obviously, Biden is going to be outrunning him there. It's a very deep blue county, but it could move to the right. You never know. It could move to the right. You don't have a lot of protest vote in so far. Um, so that, I guess, Biden can breathe a sigh of relief in the state of Illinois. But... It's not a state that really was ever anticipated to be close to begin with. And now Kansas is filling out on the Republican side, Trump with two-thirds of the vote, Biden with 88% on the Democrat side. He's actually losing a county in Kansas to the none of the above option, uh, Gove County. Obviously, it's one precinct. It's a very red county, but still, that's interesting to see there. But Trump won Florida. He uh, he won Ohio. He won Illinois. They haven't called Kansas, but he's going to win Kansas. So we'll see. The Apollo TD says, not going to lie, looking for him over the pond. He might be a bit swampy, but Youngkin would smash the Dems nationally in 2028. If the Republican establishment was going to field a candidate who is capable of victory in a national election, that would probably be their choice. And he is going to be a lot better than somebody like Haley would be, at least in terms of energizing voters. He'd be better, he'd be better um, than DeSantis, even if I think that overall Yunkin, his national political prospects may be a bit overrated by some people. I think he could win both the primary and the general. Um, but still, if it's him head-to-head -head with a more anti-establishment candidate— the anti-establishment candidate, in my opinion, would win so long as they're strong enough. So we'll see. Um, let's check the Senate race. Moreno's at 40%. He leads by 6,000 votes. He leads by 6,000 votes altogether. He is gaining. He is gaining as more votes come in, as I said he would, and now he's gaining. So here you go. All the counties that are mostly in, 79% in, 70% in. They're looking good for him, although Morgan County did flip to Dolan. So who knows? We're not ready to call it yet. I mean, we're not ready to call it, but uh, either way, more counties are coming in. And as they're coming in, Moreno continues to gain over Matt Dolan. Pendock says, what do you think about the 1920 election? It's a very interesting election especially in urban areas. Can you look at it very fast in the end? Well, 1920 was between Harding and Coolidge. I believe that was the first election where women could vote, and they mostly voted for Harding, which kind of gave him the, the edge overall, but he probably would have won anyways because he won by 
such a ridiculous uh, margin. I mean, I think it's just the case of the, you know, southern areas voting for Democrats back in the day, and then Republicans winning both the Great Plains and the Northeast because that was their coalition back then. A polarized election that ends in a landslide, yeah, it kind of makes sense why it would um, end up that way. So there's that. Uh, other than that, guys, we got 4,500 people in chat. Like the stream. Let's get to 3,000 likes. As Bernie Moreno inches closer and closer to victory, but we got a long way to go. So make sure you guys like the stream. Subscribe down below as well. We have uh, we have quite a bit to go. We've been counting the ballots for an hour. We're 23% of the way done. Johnny Hartdog says, I just remembered what it was. I forgot Trump did not really start taking the lead until the indictments occurred. I'm wondering if it were not for the indictments, Trump and Biden would have been tied. I think you can make a case that uh, that the indictments arguably helped him because then people woke up and they realized, you know what, this is insane. This is crazy. They did their own research and they're like, you know what? And you know, I may disagree with Trump on some things, but I'm going to stand with him on this. And that's the way it is. But yeah, Moreno, Moreno gains. There's one county that has not yet reported their early votes. When that's all done, the, the remainder of the vote you would anticipate would be heavily Moreno. Heavily Moreno. The Apollo TDs, his decision desk projected that Bernie Moreno wins the Republican primary. It's possible. I still think it'd be too early to call, but I think it's uh, it's looking like Moreno is the heavy favorite. The Iranian Putin for uh, a member chat says, thanks. Well, thank you. GJ says, Rep, I received several texts from the RNC suggesting Trump might be, or Tucker might be the VP pick or that Melania endorses him. Is this just clickbait? I think it largely is. I don't think Tucker Carlson even wants the position. I'd rather have him be a top advisor. I think the top advisors in the White House typically have more pull than the VP usually has anyways. If he wants to be in the administration, I think chief of staff would be a great, great uh, position for him. Also, shout out to the Iranian Putin for gifting five Red Eagle Politics memberships. Five people get the badge next to their name because of you. So congratulations, everybody. Thank the Iranian Putin for gifting five new memberships. So we got a quarter of the vote in here. Bernie Moreno so far with a lead, not a giant lead, but a 3.6% lead in counting. We'll see what happens as the night goes on. We'll check down ballot as well. We have house primaries. And uh, seems as if, let's see here. Yeah, Marin still is leading in the 9th District. There's that. That's that's really something. Cyrus, Cyrus Jalali says Trump bankrupt because of the New York case before the election. I, I mean, I'm not entirely sure he's going to go bankrupt. In terms of, oh, he doesn't have enough money to pay it off. A lot of these billionaires don't have a billion dollars on them in, ca in in particularly in cash, but he has properties. He can uh, move some money around, probably pay for it. I don't know what his angle is going to be, but it's one of those things where we'll have to see. But again, he's appealing the case. A lot of that money will likely not have to be paid before the election, but um, we will see. Max Flair says, if Joe Biden drops out of the primary, uncommitted would then become first place. Could we see a Trump versus uncommitted 2024? Well, if Biden dropped out of the primary, they would just give the delegates to somebody else. They wouldn't give the delegates to uncommitted. Uncommitted as an option is barely getting any delegates, period. So there's that. Um, let's go to Kansas. More counties are filling out for Donald Trump. Big time. There you go. It's just, it's just a garbage case. There's no way that in a fair objective trial that anybody could come to that verdict within reason. That anybody could. Vincent Corey says, what are your thoughts on Darren Bailey's run against J.B. Pritzker? Well, I mean, he was their candidate. 
he ran. He was the Republican nominee. He did better than I think a lot of people thought. But so far right now, well, Bailey's winning one county. So you never know. You never know. But a lot of it is early vote. But the one county he is winning, he's winning it by a lot. So we'll we'll see what happens when we got more votes in. But looking at Ohio, we have a projection to make in Ohio. We have a projection. The Red Eagle Politics Decision Desk can call Ohio for Bernie Moreno. It was not supposed to be a, a wide margin of victory for him, but the Trump back candidate has likely prevailed. We can make this projection right here, right now. Bernie Moreno has won. The Electa Bros lose again. The Neocons lose again. Matt Dolan is done. We must unite. We must unify behind Bernie Moreno so we can go out there and defeat Sherrod Brown and give Ohio the best Senate delegation in the entire country. We must defeat Sherrod Brown, period. We can make this projection. Papa Tango, thank you for becoming a member. Miku Huntu 4X bots as Dems coping saying Bernie will lose in his weakest. Well, they said the same thing about J.D. Vance too, so um, let them cope. Donald Trump being at the top of the ticket, that's really what matters, and the more votes that will be counted... Bernie Moreno's lead is, it's not even just a lead. He's an overperformer. He is an overperformer. He won the early vote. He won the mail-in vote. And he's winning the election day vote. This map is going to be a lot more teal for Moreno than it currently is right now. Commander Video says election day votes come in clutch. It's true. Blind Eye says billionaire investor John Paulson is holding a mega donor fundraiser for Trump next month. That's true. He's getting more donors, which is good. You need the money. Pendox says, you didn't read my super chat. I think I did. I, did I not read a super chat? I missed one. I I read the last one you sent about the 1920 election. Um, unless I missed one, which it doesn't seem like I did. I don't believe I did. The Apollo TD says, did prefer Dolan, but now got to back Moreno to win. Well, thank you for being mature about it. Some people will be not so mature about it, I'm sure. The Jaded Kriegsman, thank you for becoming a full member. But I think it shows that when Trump is on the ballot, the primary electorate is going to be more Trump-friendly, which means that MAGA candidates, period, when Donald Trump is on the ballot, are at a point of strength, whereas when he's not on the ballot, they tend to be a little bit weaker because they don't fundraise as well because the establishment will sabotage them etc. You name it. Miku Huntu 4X bot says their cope is Vance was R plus 3 in an R plus 10 state. Well, he he won um, he, he, he won by 7, 6 to 7 points. He didn't win by 3. And it, it doesn't exactly matter that, that Vance ended up winning by less than Trump. He still won by a decent margin. He was going up against a fairly strong candidate as well, probably somebody on, it's relatively in line with Sherrod Brown. DJ Liquid Smoke says, My roomie who is glued to X says he thinks Cash Patel will be Trump's VP pick. He used to be chief of staff, wasn't he? I don't think he was chief of staff. I could be wrong. I think he was in some other position. I don't know if he'd be the VP pick. We'll see. I feel like if he's going to go with somebody of his uh, ethnic designation, he'd go with Vivek, but... I don't think either are going to be in top tier consideration. There's always a report every every day, every week that comes out. Oh, well, the running mate is going to be this person. He's ruling out this guy. He's ruling out this person. It's all noise. They're saying Kevin McCarthy now is going to be the chief of staff. There's no evidence for it. The same report says Ted Cruz would be AG. I don't think Ted Cruz is going to leave the Senate to become AG, and they're going to leave that Senate seat open. I think it's very extremely unlikely that that is going to happen. So we'll see. And more votes come in, and Moreno expands his lead. He now is leading by almost six percentage points. This is huge. He's, he, he's expanding his lead. He's gaining more and more as the night goes on. 
And Donald Trump himself is apparently gaining more. They still haven't fixed the error. They still haven't fi they fixed one of the errors. There's still another error that they need to fix that shows Haley winning Shelby County. They also show Dean Phillips winning that county as well. Both of those things are entirely false. They're tabulation errors. They need to be fixed right now. But you look at Illinois. More votes are coming in. We'll check the House races. And it seems like Bost is, you know, still up 73-27. Miku Huntu Forex Bot says, Sorry, the COPA was supposedly R plus 10 but turned R plus 6. Well, it doesn't matter um, either way. It, it literally plays no role. If that election was on the same ballot as Donald Trump, it's very likely that Vance would have ended up winning by more. And you can't really use the DeWine coattails thing because DeWine had a severely different coalition. Uh, he got 20-some percent of Democrats to vote for him. Democrats didn't really run a candidate uh, that was anything other than like a sacrificial lamb that nobody had ever heard of as their nominee. So there's that. The Jaded Craigsman says part of the problem is too many people have a poor understanding of how the government works. They think the president is a king and for God he can't do much without a friendly Senate and House. Well, that is why people need to be careful of who they're voting for down ballot. You need Bernie Moreno to win in Ohio. You need Tim Sheehy to win in Montana. You need uh, Kerry Lake in Arizona, whoever the nominee is in Nevada, Eric Covde in Wisconsin— Everywhere, just vote for Republicans. Some of them might end up uh, being rhinos at the end of the day, but seems like we're having more candidates rise up that are not rhinos than candidates who are rhinos, which is a very, very good step in the right direction to fixing the party and fixing the country by proxy. So Moreno is, is really doing very well. Moreno being an overperformer here also shows the Emerson poll was pretty accurate, and it also shows that Trump is going to do very well across the board in November, so maybe that's a good sign. Menace 712 says, What state would be Trump's biggest upset win, and which state would be the biggest surprise if he lost in November, not counting battleground states? Well, I mean, any state he won, I think, would be surprising if he lost. I don't think he's going to lose any state that he won. I think that his biggest upset victory that's realistic could possibly come in a state like Minnesota, a state like Maine, something along those lines. But, I mean, we'll see. But, yeah, I mean, Moreno is just going to run up the score if this is true. Milky Way Gaming says, Brown will now win. It's time to put it all in Montana. I know you're just, you just don't understand how politics works. That's just the way it goes. Um, Brown's going to win because the guy who was an overperformer tonight became the nominee. Wow, genius logic you have there. Brown's going to win because the guy who is tied to Trump is on the same ballot as Trump in a state that Trump is going to win by 10 points. Do you hear yourself? Do these people hear themselves or are they just trying to act like snakes and try to get the most neoconservative people in there? Like, are there criticisms of Moreno? I mean, he's kind of dull personality-wise compared to some of these other candidates for sure. But, I mean, hey, to say Moreno's going to lose and that we need to, to forfeit the seat is just stupid. It's, it is nothing else to it. Like, the guy won by more than people expected tonight because Trump was on the same ballot. When Trump is on the ballot in November... And he's up there running up the score. He's doing well in the Obama-Trump areas that Sherrod Brown did well in in 2018. This is the type of guy you need to limit the margins in those counties, if anything. So, no, I'm, I'm personally ecstatic at the, the prospects of Moreno becoming the nominee. He was down in the polls, in the early polls. That's true, but LaRose was down in the polls by more, first of all. For two, Moreno has kind of had a lower name recognition. And for three, you look at the early polls in 2016 in Ohio. Who was winning those? Oh, it was Ted Strickland. How did that turn out for him? He lost by 20. So, uh, you know, all the arguments I hear in favor of Matt Dolan just fall flat. I mean, do you seriously want some guy in there who 
had voted for amnesty, voted for gun control, voted against pro-life legislation. Uh, You know, obviously he ran a campaign focusing on immigration, which is why he did so well. And there's something that could be learned from that across the board, but still, it doesn't matter. This is Ohio. If you're talking about Georgia or Arizona, you could have this conversation. It doesn't matter. Milky Way Gaming says Oz also did good in Obama-Trump areas in the primary. That's beside the point. That's beside the point. He did better in eastern Pennsylvania. And in the general election, he didn't do poorly in uh, eastern Pennsylvania. His main problem was in western Pennsylvania. He did not boost white working class turnout And even so, he wasn't winning decisively. He was getting in the 30s. He didn't outperform the polls whatsoever. The outperformer of the polls was the other uh, neocon uh, candidate, the the full-on neocon and Dave McCormick. So the Apollo TD says, need to wine and Portman to back Moreno, full-throated. Interesting choice of language there, but... uh, yeah, they, they, they do need to go out there and, and uh, back him at any opportunity. I mean, if they want to be team players and they claim that they're like the real popular wing of the, the Ohio GOP, well, they got to get their hands on deck. They got to get their hands um, on deck to help them win. They got to go out there. I mean, Moreno's not winning by a hair. This is not a close primary race. Pennsylvania's primary was two months uh, from now destroyed the party and you didn't even have a serious candidate that could win. And that was Pennsylvania. This is Ohio. This is this is not the same thing. Ohio is a much redder state than Pennsylvania. Um, and Trump carried him to the nomination. Trump will carry him to victory in the general. Cyrus Jalali says, can you switch parties instantly so you can vote in opposite party primaries? These Dems cross over Votes are concerning. Yes, well, they exist, but, you know, it depends. Some states are open primaries, like Ohio, Um, but Florida's closed, Arizona's closed, and you can't do that. There's a a deadline for registration. Zachary Stewart says, if you have told me 15 years ago Ohio would have Bernie and JD and Georgia had Ossif, I would have said, who's the president, the apprentice guy? Well, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. I hope the apprentice guy becomes president this November, or we're not going to have a country if the apprentice guy loses. So that there's that. I didn't think it'd get called this early. That's what I'm surprised about. Okay, they they fixed Shelby County. Now they now Holmes County is is out of whack. So New York Times has some uh, something to fix here. The Apollo TD says Chipotle under Trump or Biden. We'll just look at the numbers. I posted that meme several times because it's true. You could go into Chipotle under Trump. You could get a, a chicken or a steak burrito with, with guac, and it would be cheaper than a chicken burrito without guac is now under Biden. I mean, the prices for food are ridiculous. It doesn't matter if you're eating out at like a, a nice restaurant. You're just grabbing some fast casual like Chipotle or, or, or something like that. The in and out prices are out of control, or you just you know cook for yourself. I mean, the prices for steaks have doubled. It's insanity what's going on. You have to spend. You know, you live in a much lower you know s- standard of living if you just spend the same amount that you were spending during the previous administration. Now you can't do it. I mean, you're borderline broke. Rents through the roof. Mortgage prices are insane. I mean, there's just there's just nothing that's changed for the positive during this administration. The border's wide open. You cannot make a case for why Biden should be reelected. You cannot make a single case for it. The only case is blump bad. But even then, it's like all the all the reasons why that Trump is bad is easily debunkable. The lawsuits are easily debunkable. Everything's easily debunkable. James Giddings says, Ohio calls it for Bernie Moreno for Senate. Well, I I believe he's going to be their next senator. He's possibly going to end up with close to 50% of the vote when it's all counted. Yes, I know it's early, but still, this is huge. 
The jaded Kriegsman says here is hoping Trump pardons Peter Navarro and then makes him ambassador to China. Would love watching Xi Jinping as the USD couples. Yeah, well, we've got a long way to go. We got to get Trump elected. We do. I think he will win, but we got to get him elected. So a lot of this is early vote. Trump's margin, by the time the rest of the votes are in, it's going to get closer to uh, 90% of the vote in Ohio. And that's with a lot of early voting when Haley was still in the race, et cetera. Long Island Weather says, did you see investor John Paulson to hold a mega donor fundraiser for Trump? I did see that indeed. Uh, I think we got a couple super chats about it already earlier on in the stream about an hour ago. So there's that. We got almost 5,000 live viewers. Everybody like the stream down below uh, and make sure you guys subscribe. Let's get to 175,000. I know there's a good chunk of you guys who have not yet subscribed. Make sure you guys hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get to 175,000 subscribers. Our next major, major milestone. Let's hit it. So Illinois, Donald Trump, more votes are in. He is at 76.2% of the vote so far, and he's doing even better than his statewide total in Cook County, which is where Chicago is. So that's somewhat encouraging. Now we could look at the, uh, the, 12th, the 12th district here, Darren Bailey. He's now in the 30s. He may have a shot. He might have a shot. 5% of the vote is in. Mike Bost is leading, but he's only up by 24 points. So if we could knock off Mike Bost and get the Moreno nomination, this is a massive, massive night for the America First slash MAGA wing of the Republican Party. And he leads by 10. He leads by 10. He's about to, he could get close to 50% of the vote. He now leads by 10. I mean, this is insane. Let's go look at the county map here. Let's go sort by percentage in. The counties that are all the way in, uh, Moreno is winning. He's at 50% in nearly all of the counties that are 100% of the way in. That is absolutely huge for Bernie Moreno. And as the more these counties end up reporting, the more they come in for Moreno, you have a third of the vote in. He's up by 10 and he is up He's close to 50%. That's huge. Base Katz is shit libs on predicted saying that they won the Ohio Senate. Well, I've yet to hear a reason for why Moreno is a weak candidate other than, oh, he has kind of a dull personality, but does it really matter when Trump's at the top of the ticket and he's endorsing you? It doesn't. I, I refuse to believe that that's a serious knock at him. Anybody who's coping about it is just an idiot. They're just idiots. They're fools. They don't understand how politics works. I mean, I honestly thought this would be a close race. Moreno pulled ahead with it. I was almost on the verge of predicting a Dolan win because of his late surge, but I didn't because I said Trump's on the ballot, his endorsement as poll, it's going to move the needle. And did it? Yes, sir, it did. Moreno won the primary and he's up by over 10 points which is absolutely huge. So there's that. Um, let's get him elected. Let's get him elected in November. If you actually care about electability, you're not going to sit here and say, well, uh, we lost the seat then. I don't care. No, you're going to help him get elected. There's no real reason. What policy does he take a position on that you disagree with um, that is not in line with Trump's, first of all, none, I mean, some of these people don't like Trump, but that's because they're just holdovers because they're salty about the primary. I don't think they exist in large numbers in the real world, though. Del Delano Cardi says, voted early for Moreno and Trump out of Lake County. I encourage every voter to come November to vote early. The Apollo TD says, Senate, very important. If Trump wins in November, having the Senate for all four years of the presidency means easier legislation, better judges for four years, and the wall. That's true. M says Trump's last second rally probably saved Moreno. It probably did. It probably did. He is the winner. And he look at that lead. That lead is now 11 points. He keeps, he keeps growing his lead. That is huge. Absolutely huge. Biden 
with not even 200,000 votes, Donald Trump with 300,000 votes, and that gap is going to sizably increase because the early vote's all in. Miku Huntu 4X bots says Brown hasn't shared a ballot with Trump lights out. That is true. Oh, man. Let the cope ensue. Let the cope begin from the Dolan people. Um, I never got it. I never understood it. I never understood it whatsoever. He's a rhino. He's not even that proven electorally speaking. He's never won statewide before. He's somebody that would probably cause a lot of ticket splitting and not in a way that would benefit Republicans. We got to get Moreno elected. This is the state of Ohio. He can win. I think he's the favorite at the end of the day just because Trump's on the ballot. So yeah, Dolan, you are posting yet another L, yet another fake surge, two election cycles in a row of the same nonsense, and it has backfired. It has backfired absolutely completely. Yeah, Darren Bailey's now at 39. That is getting closer and closer and closer. All right, so we have Florida. Trump won big in Florida. He's got close to 900,000 votes. He will crack that when it's all said and done. Uh, Haley at 14. It's looking like the Georgia race, and that's with a lot of people in Florida voting early, voting before Haley even dropped out. Then you go look at the state of Kansas. Donald Trump there, early vote close to 70%. That's increasing as more votes come in. He's doing very well in the Kansas City area. Even Johnson County in the early vote, he's cracking 65%, which is not that common for Johnson County. Also, shout out to Hudson Dean for the $1 super chat. Everybody help. I mean, every dollar helps. We got all 5,000 people to send in $1. I think that helped out the channel quite a bit. Uh, so thank you, Hudson Dean, for the one. But... Uh, Ohio, yeah, we're still 35% of the way in. We've been counting ballots for 90 minutes, but Bernie Moreno has a lead of 11 points. I just did not understand the Moreno hate. I never understood it whatsoever. Um, I guess it's just because they want a neocon in there. They want they want an absolute rhino in Dolan who is not fit for Ohio by any stretch of the term. He is somebody who has supported gun control, uh, opposed pro-life legislation, supported amnesty in the past, like his family changed the name of the Cleveland Indians. Do not mess with the Cleveland Indians' name and expect to win a Republican primary. <laughs> Moreno's got this in November, I, I believe it. Joshua Mills says, Do you, did you see the Trump campaign is possibly going to bring in Paul Manafort to help with the re-election campaign? Don't know what your feelings are on this. I think it's smart to use a winning strategy from 2016. Well, yeah. I mean, if, if you had people around him in 2016 that helped him win, bring him back. I mean, you see the whole squad from back then. They did their part. They knew the pulse of the people. They worked on it. James Saps is Dolan's Cleveland Guardians lost. The Cleveland Indians won. That is true. Don't mess with the Cleveland Indians name and expect to win a Republican primary in Ohio. It's true. Like, I, I don't understand where they find these people. Like, if these people are so good as candidates and can appeal to the Trump base, but also appeal to, like, independents, they wouldn't be getting decked in primaries like this. They wouldn't be. I mean, that's the thing. Dolan is not that strong of a candidate other than him having deep pockets. That's the way it works. Uh, Richard Klein says, thanks for what you do. Thank you for uh, the super chat there yourself, Richard. Bruce Rice, thank you for gifting five Red Eagle Politics memberships. Um, thank you. Helps out the channel quite a bit when you do that. Carl and Don Hamilton says, how about Tulsi Gabbard for VP? My choice? Well, it's a wild card. 
it's a little bit of a wild card when you have uh, somebody who became a conservative just yesterday. She's always been good on some issues, but even people in chat, you know, you mentioned her as VP. It gets a, it, you get some people with a little bit of blowback on that one. UNSC Connor says it'll always be the Cleveland Indians and Washington Redskins. That's true. It always will be. Don't forget about the, uh, I think, what is it, the North Dakota Fighting Sioux. Don't forget about the Edmonton Eskimos. We're not going to cave. We're not going to cave into political correctness for the sake of appeasing uh, not even 10% of the population that yells about it nonstop. It's just the way that it is. Let's check Illinois now. Let's go down to this uh, race, and Mike Bost has a 24-point lead, but only 11% of the votes in, are in. That could be a very, very close election. So let's see here. Um, yep, Dolan is losing more and more counties as the map uh, fills in. That's crazy. Bernie Moreno with close to 47% of the vote in now. That's that's crazy. But Moreno proved tonight he is an overperformer, and I think he's going to win in November. I will say that. Um, there's, there's nothing else to it. Especially with Trump on the ballot. Because I think that's what pushed him over the head. Or over the top. M says Moreno hate was astroturfed by the swamp. Exactly. They even made the fake story calling him like a closeted gay. Didn't work. It bounced off. Monty Farnsworth, thank you for the one. Appreciate it. But yeah, we're all Bernie bros tonight. Not in the sense of the term of Bernie Sanders, but in the sense of that we support Bernie Moreno for Senate. And we want him to go out there and win. And I do believe he is going to go out there and win. I never understood why being tied to Trump is a bad thing in Ohio with Trump on the ballot. I, I just never understood it. You know, in a midterm year, you could make the case that in a swing state, oh, they're not going to have the resources, X, Y, and Z. I get that. But still, this is a presidential year. Sherrod Brown is strong, but he's not ridiculously strong. And Dolan is not somebody that would get ticket splitters from Democrats because Sherrod Brown's strong to the point where the candidate that does the best limits the ticket splitting of people that get out there and vote for Trump and then vote for Sherrod Brown. And those voters are the type of voters that would be more inclined to vote for Moreno than they would be to vote for Dolan. So there's that. David Kirker says, I've donated to Moreno, Herrera, and Lake this cycle. We are going for total MAGA victory in Congress. What other campaigns are worth donating to? Well, I'm not against donating to individual campaigns, but the number one campaign that matters most is the top of the ticket because that carries people to the finish line in certain places. Uh, so donate to Trump. Honestly, donate to the RNC. It's safe to do it now because we have new leadership that actually knows what they're doing and actually has shown signs of wanting to uh, correct course and chase ballots and things like that. Like we got a lot of people you could donate to, or yeah, you can donate to down ballot candidates as well that are in key areas that you would like to see win. So I'm not against that either, especially in primaries. The Polita Voice says, love your content. Been watching since 2019. Just started my own political channel and can't wait for the election to come. Well, thank you for your support and thank you for your super chat. But yeah, it's a, uh, it's a very, very big victory for Bernie Moreno so far. Robert Petruca says, Moreno will be scary on gun control. I saw a very dis disturbing video, but he'll be way better than Brown. Well, people need to understand that Moreno came around it to MAGA late, and, and I think that J.D. Vance did as well, and they're very close together now, and Vance has been our one of our better senators, if not the best senator, to the point where I can't imagine Moreno being bad on an issue like guns when it's all said and done. Even if he said something back in the day 
that happen to be, you know, maybe a little iffy. But yeah, Trump is at 70% in Kansas now. He's winning in Kansas. 32% of the vote is in. They called him in Kansas the winner. Illinois, he's the winner in Illinois. He's at 77% of the vote. That's going to go up in the 80s as more vote is counted in Illinois too, which I believe is also an open primary in a blue state. So that's also important to note. Dylan Allen says, does Garvey get 45% in California Senate race? I don't think he can win, but it bodes well for future races. If he gets 45, it'd be considered a massive victory in my book. And also down ballot races are going to be more Republican as a result. So I would completely just love to see him get that total margin. So um, there's that. Let's see. But yeah, Trump with this with a, uh, a resounding array of victories tonight. We got four out of five. Arizona, the polls close in 52 minutes. So we'll we'll report the results hopefully soon after as they come in. But Florida's counted pretty much all their ballots so far, almost all of their ballots. And Trump with close to 900,000 votes, still a few counties that are left with ballots to report, but still a resounding victory for Donald Trump in the state of Florida, but Ohio, a big victory down ballot for Donald Trump in the state as well. Um, Bryce Mann says, what did McCarthy do that was so bad? Because at the end of the day, he did the exact same thing as Mike Johnson. Well, um, what McCarthy did that was bad was uh, mainly in terms of the promises that he broke, the caving to a lot of these spending bills, and also on top of that, his, his endless support for foreign aid. And a lot of that has been kind of stalled under the new speakership, so it's not like they've been acting entirely in lockstep. Zachary Stewart says Tim Ryan was the Dems' best candidate in 2022, and J.D. still clocked him. Now Trump's on the ballot. I'd say Brown is more done than Tester. I think that tonight we can prove that Moreno is somebody who's an overperformer. You did have a little bit of a divided primary field, but it was still relatively early in the primary cycle, and you have a lot of time from now until November to get everybody on board. Uh, LaRose, I think, will be a team player. I hope Dolan will be. We'll have to see. A big super chat from After Shadow 162 for $100 saying, we really appreciate your reporting, listening in tonight from Washington State. Go Trump. Thank you, After Shadow 162. Everybody put a one in chat to appreciate After Shadow 162 for sending a $100 super chat. It's uh, super chats like that that keep the stream going. Delano Cardi for two says Moreno has more votes than Biden. <laughs> That's true. Philip Nones for 2024 says, thank you for your commentary and your passion. Have another glass of water on us. Well, um, I still have more in the uh, more in the pitcher that I'm going to pour, more in the filter, because we drink filtered water in this household. That much I can tell you. Um, but... Yeah, Moreno has more votes than Biden. That is pretty funny. That means he also has more votes than Sherrod Brown as well, uh, more likely than not. Well, technically, technically not. I mean, because even though they're not counting it, he's at, what, 259.9 because those are all of the, the ballots. So even if Brown got all those votes, Moreno, I think, would still be ahead of him. Yeah, 247. Yeah, pretty close to it. M says McCarthy sabotaged Maggot in the midterms. Well, that's also why he never should have been allowed to become speaker either. And yeah, he did live with, uh, he, he did literally roommate with Frank Luntz, who's a total rhino. Basically, as, as someone in chat put it, a Democrat pollster. He's one of those people that did those, um, those what's it called? Those focus groups before the election trying to sway public opinion against Donald Trump because he's a scumbag. And he lived with Kevin McCarthy. Yeah, McCarthy is... It's over. It's over for his career. He'll never be chief of staff. I don't know who wrote that article or who leaked that intel. They could have been trolling. And Donald Trump has crossed 900,000 votes in the state of Florida. 
He's crossed 900,000. That is absolutely huge out of the state of Florida. Let's see. Um, Ohio, Trump is, he, at the end of the day, he might get close, he'll get close to a million. I don't know if he'll hit a million, but he'll get close to a million. In 2020, in the Florida primary, Donald Trump, we could see how many, uh, how many votes he had because Biden actually had a million total votes then. The other Republicans got some and then in the Republican primary, Trump got 1.1 million, being basically the only person on the ballot. So turnout is down a little bit, but not ridiculously. And Democrat turnout in the primaries are plunging, which tells you that if you use the primary as an indicator, it looks a lot better for Donald Trump now than it did in 2020, which is huge given the razor thin margin for error that Biden has. Um, Supreme Leader. For two, says Elector Bro Cope, imminent dolanoids are done. Yeah, it's not surprising. He's over. I mean, he, he didn't win a primary campaign, an open primary in Ohio. He couldn't get any more than 33.6%. He's going to finish with less than a third of the vote, possibly less than 30%. But he was supposedly the electable choice, despite outspending Moreno by a lot, etc. You name it. It's like, no. The people that think Dolan are more electable, I just never understood it. I never understood it other than, oh, his campaign is like higher quality graphics and commercials, which I'm not saying isn't something that matters, but it's not enough to really make up the gap. I mean, so did Josh Mandel in 2012. Did that exactly play out too well for him? Not necessarily. I don't understand why Bernie Moreno, yeah, they're going to hit him on abortion. They're going to do the same thing they try to do to Vance. They're going to... Uh, time to Trump, but it's Ohio. It's not. It's not even like Arizona, like an ambiguous state. It's Ohio. Seriously, Moreno's got this. I'm not worried about the Senate race in November at all. I never understood that argument ever. I never understood it, unless you think Trump is like a bad fit for Ohio for a Republican, which is just completely untrue. And in fact, he's the best fit for the state of Ohio that we've ever literally seen, period, at least at the, at the presidential level. All right, let's see. Okay, more votes are in. Trump is almost a 450,000 in Ohio. Um, and we're waiting on Arizona to dump some ballots in as well. Someone said, how's Kerry doing? That primary is not till late July. Uh, the down ballot races in a lot of these states are done on different days. I think it's dumb. I think that having a primary that late is kind of disastrous, and it gives the incumbents a severely positive advantage. You know, you got to have your general election campaign at least starting in like June. It's a good thing they moved it up from like August 6th to July 30th, but... I mean, either way, I guess the benefit is that Carrie Lake is in a better position to be nominated than she was for governor. So that there's that aspect to it. But yeah, Moreno's about to lead by 15 points right now. He's going to lead by about 15 points. Just like I never understood any argument that Moreno was weak compared to Dolan. I never understood it because that would bank on a sizable portion of Biden voters splitting their tickets for Dolan or a sizable percentage of Trump voters saying Moreno is too outlandish for me, so I'll vote for Dolan. It doesn't make any sense. Duran Inked once says, thanks for the live coverage. Red was happy to vote for Trump in Florida today. Thoughts on Rick Scott's reelection? I think he'll win easily. I would not worry too much about that. He'll win by 5 to 10 points. He's the guy that's known for barely winning elections, and I think that that streak is about to end because Florida is not really a toss-up state anymore. And e even look at this, guys. Look at this. Franklin County. Moreno leads in Franklin County. Um, he possibly could take the lead in some of these other counties. 
like when it's all said and done, I think he might win every single county. Like, like that's what I'm watching every county. Oh, but he's unelectable, but he wins in every county. He wins every county in Ohio, but he's unelectable. Like seriously? <laughs> That's another good tweet. Matt Dolan was so electable that he's about to lose every every county, literally every county. And he may win a couple. I'm not saying he can't. Like, if you want to look at Cuyahoga, there's a chance. But the way the election day votes are going, see, there was a, there was already another county that I believe that flipped just as I was on the other tab. Um, Peg Zahn says, does Sheehy or Moreno have a better chance at flipping their Senate seats? I think Sheehy's got a better chance, but I think both win. Luann Bowling says, looking forward to the 23rd in Louisiana. Go MAGA with a AUX. Thank you for that. Thank you, Luann, for the 20. Dylan Allen says, Orlando resident Rick Scott wins by 8%. No cause for concern here. I agree. Now 50% of the vote is in. And Moreno, he leads in every county except 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, and 50% of the vote is in. He leads by 15 points. So that's huge. And Vance only got 32% of the primary vote. Dolan, I mean, not Dolan, Moreno is at 48%, and he's probably going to increase that total as the night goes on. Dylan, uh, okay, we already did that one. Ebenezer Cooge, thank you for the two. I, again, you, you send these weird super chats all the time with these uh, weird phrases that I'm not going to read for one reason or another, but, but thank you for the super chat only in Ohio, bro. I'll read that part. Um, Sam Madsen says also Dean Phillips is getting 15% in most rural counties. That's not too surprising, especially in like this part of Ohio where a lot of Democrats have completely abandoned Biden and the party altogether. You have some guy who dropped out of the race and he's still um, pulling 20, 30% of the vote in some of these counties, which is crazy to see. Even in like... Uh, uh, Ashtabula County, Trumbull County, he's at getting like 21%, which is a lot higher than what you'd anticipate. But still, Biden's at 87. Trump is at 78. He's increasing his total too. And that's with a lot of early vote for Haley. So good news for Donald Trump out of the state of Ohio. Absolutely good, good news. So Kansas, he's now at 72. More votes are pouring in for Trump. Arizona, we don't have anything. Polls close in 40 minutes. So feel free to keep the conversation going. We'll keep watching the results, but feel free to send in super chats if you guys would like to keep the conversation going. Still 60-40 for Mike Boston, Illinois, 61 to 39, but just 22% of the vote is in. Yeah, Phillips is actually beating his Minnesota margin, but he's not beating his New Hampshire margin. That was his best performance, but Biden wasn't on the ballot, so I wouldn't read too much into it. And he's the only other candidate in the ballot in Ohio. So that's kind of like the stand-in for like the uncommitted vote. And even then, Biden's at 37,000 votes in Cleveland. Like, it's not all that good. I mean, for this primary, 268,000. In 2020, in the Ohio primary... You could look at this. You could go look at the Democrat primary. He got like 700,000 votes. So now half the vote is in. He's on on track to probably get 500,000. So he goes down from 2020 already. And on the Republican side, Trump, he currently sits at 506,000 votes. He might get close to a million. He only got 713,000 in Ohio in 2020. Now, both of these races were relatively uncontested. Bernie already dropped out, you name it. So Trump is doing much better in the primary, setting another record in Ohio, carrying Moreno to the finish line. But, uh, but he, uh, Biden's not doing as well on his side of things. So it just shows that Ohio continues its turn to the right as more of a red state. 
Now, still, we have more votes to count, but the counties that Moreno is trailing in, 16% in, 45% in, he barely trails, uh, 24% in in that county, which is most likely going to vote like the county surrounding it in Guernsey, which I believe is where one of our super chatters said he was from. Uh, Hardin County, 27%. That one's going to narrow. Wood County at 42. That's razor thin already. Cleveland, 38. Uh, Dolan won, I think, Cleveland. And and I believe maybe was Giaga in the Senate primary in 2022. I could look this up. Um, the Senate primary. Let me see if I could find the results for it. 2022 Ohio Senate primary is what we're trying to look for. Um, in the, yeah, we'll do New York Times. Let me see. I'll pull it up on my end so I can just pull it up for reference. Yeah, uh, Geauga County and Cuyahoga did go for Dolan. Um, but beyond that point, it doesn't seem like any of the counties currently go. And yeah, also, he won Franklin County. He won Franklin County, which I believe he's losing right now and probably does lose because that's early vote. So let's see. Stephen Knizek says, I'm not going to say Dems are voting Haley in the Florida primary, but I do recognize the existence of never Trumpers. Can we now surmise that the peak of never Trump is perhaps 15%? Well, some of those Haley voters were from before Haley dropped out. Some of them might just be stand-ins. And again, registered Republican does not always mean that they are self-identified as Republicans. It means that they're more likely to, especially now. But I mean, Haley getting 14% after she dropped out, I mean, that's still far lower than what Ted Cruz was getting at a lot of places in, in 2016. I don't think it means much. I think the real protest vote would have been the governor of Florida in DeSantis, who is only at 43,000 votes, despite being the sitting governor. Howard Dean won Vermont after he dropped out in 2004. So the fact that DeSantis is at 4% is, is just kind of comical, and there was no major push for Florida either. So the fact that Trump is getting still close to a million votes there, coming close to a primary record in Florida, is still, in my opinion, relatively impressive, especially because, you know, if Biden was on the ballot, he'd probably be doing even worse um, on that side of things there. But it is a lower turnout primary. It's already a done deal. It's already decided. Trump won it with 80 plus percent. Haley got like below 14. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Sandwich Man says polls show Dolan plus three, Moreno plus five. Result is Moreno by 15. How about a victory for Emerson? I think Emerson can pat themselves on the back uh, for having a good primary in Ohio because that means maybe they're accurate in the Rust Belt if they were accurate or the most accurate in the primary. But even then, they underestimated Dolan. I think it's because Trump's on the ballot. I mean, not underestimated, underestimated Moreno. Because Trump is on the ballot, Moreno is doing better. That's what we're noticing. And that kind of means that I think he's going to be in a very, very good position ahead of the November election. Like, seriously, Matt Dolan was supposed to win and uh, he's losing every county almost. I mean, seriously, like, I, I don't understand this notion. I feel like the Democrats saying that Moreno can't win is a psyop to get them to abandon the race, if anything. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to me either. But we're at 55% of the vote reporting. We're about 35 minutes away from the polls closing in the final state of the night in Arizona. So still, oh, Darren Bailey's making it closer in Illinois. He got that down to an eight-point race. If you guys look at this, it's actually down to a 7.6% race. And look at this. A lot of the counties that are in this part of the district are heavily backing Darren Bailey by a lot. So he, like I said, he might upset Mike Bost. It's a, we got a ways to go, but he might upset Mike Bost. He's within striking distance with a third of the vote in. He might upset him. He might. And once again, I'm asking New York Times to fix their error because there's no way Haley's winning that county. <laughs> I mean, 
We could look at it on Decision Desk. We could look at the results there. What do they show? Yeah, the Decision Desk shows Donald Trump winning that county with 82% of the vote. So New York Times is tweaking. They're making an error that's kind of annoying, I'd have to say. Let's see. App Trump expands his lead as more votes are tallied. On top of it, Bernie Moreno, he leads by 103,000 votes. I mean, that's not even just a, that's just, that's a beatdown. He won by 103,000 in a primary. He is more separate from Dolan than Dolan is from LaRose at this point. That's insane. Branch Covidian says, I know a bunch of conservatives in Cook County, Illinois, that took a Democrat ballot. It looks like there's a chance that, that Kim Fox's successor might lose. Well, that's interesting. But anyways, guys, like the stream down below. Subscribe to the channel. We need to hit 175K. We are knocking on the door. Do it. Hit that subscribe button. One, If you're not subscribed and you hit that subscribe button, that is good luck for November. That is good luck for Trump and also Bernie Moreno in Ohio because we don't just need the presidency. We, we need the presidency, but we need the Senate too. We need the down-ballot races. We need authentic conservatives, America first conservatives in down ballot office. That's what we need. That's what we're getting in some of these primaries, but we got a long way to go. Long way to go. Penn Dock says, my favorite part of the night is DeSantis being humiliated in the Florida primary. What a loser. Well, I mean, he ran his campaign the way he did. He deserved what came to him. I mean, I, I can't really sit here and be like, oh, it's so sad. Uh, like, no, you ran a horrible campaign, you pissed everybody off, you couldn't pick a lane, and you lost, and now your political career, I'm not going to sit here and say it's 100% over, but am I going to say it's 90%, 95% over? Probably. I think he'll try to run again, and I think it, he'll do even worse, because the hype and facade has worn off. He just doesn't have the X factor. He doesn't have what it takes. He doesn't have the charisma, you know... Is he that different from Trump on policy in a good way to make up for it? Apparently not when people delve beneath the surface. And in his own home state, he got, what, 4% of the vote? I mean, Seminole County, he apparently got 13%. I still don't believe that number. Um, it's, it's hard for me to buy it. I feel like that's also a tabulation error. I can't even find Seminole County here, but still... No, Florida's Trump country, and Trump is going to increase that number as more votes come in, probably to like 920,000, 930,000-ish votes. So let's see. Bernie Moreno's at 49%. He hasn't flipped any more counties, it looks like. But he's on the verge of flipping Gaga, which is a county, or however you pronounce it, that Matt Dolan won back in 2022. And Wood County, he's on the verge of flipping that one. Guernsey, he's likely going to flip. Hamilton, he might flip. I mean, the suburbs are surprisingly pro-Moreno. Moreno did very well in the suburbs. He did well in the suburbs and the Obama-Trump areas, but he's unelectable. I know it's a primary, but still... I mean, you have to look at the big picture. He doesn't really have a point of, of weak, a point of weakness, really. I just don't see it. He's he, Matt Dolan's about to lose every single county. He, you know, literally, Moreno proved he's an overperformer, which gives me confidence. It gives me confidence in his ability to win in November. That I could say. So there's that. You look at Florida. Arizona polls are going to close in 30 minutes in Arizona. That is a state we're going to be watching, but also we'll go back to Illinois. More of those counties in that district are filling in. Trump's lead keeps growing. He keeps growing his lead in Kansas as well. And a down ballot. Yeah, boss lead is six points. Bailey is the upset on. I said an upset could happen. 
I said he doesn't need the Trump endorsement to win. And you got a lot of counties with a lot of vote left in them. And so far, it seems as if Bailey's going to be in a very good position to take this. If the if the dominoes fall in the right way, if the blocks fall in the right way, he could take it. Obviously, we're 41% of the way in, but the fact that this race is you know a six-point ball game it shows me that there's hope. There's hope for Bailey, especially his election day vote usually will come in later. Um, I don't know how it's coming in in Illinois right now. So we really have yet to see. But, you know, if if Bailey can beat Bost, we finally would have knocked out a rhino in Congress for the first time this election cycle, which would be absolutely huge. So there's that. More votes in out of Ohio. And Bernie Moreno is at 49.1%. Matt Dolan is down there with less than a third of the vote. The supposed primary winner who would win, uh, he, he totally would have beaten Sherrod Brown in November. He could only get 225,000 people to vote for him in an open primary. I mean, he got less votes than Biden. Moreno has, has more votes than Biden. Tom Saffs says, didn't DeSantis n- notice the boat parade for Trump in his enti- uh, in his state? Pr- I mean, he probably didn't pay attention to it. I don't even think he was really in his state. I think he was too busy in Iowa. But you know what? It is what it is. Oh, we flipped the county that LaRose was winning. We flipped the county. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, and you've completed the clean sweep. The clean sweep is almost complete. I think the terminology for Ohio, I don't know who the last Republican was to win every single county in Ohio. It might have been uh, George Voinovich or however you pronounce his name, but he was the electoral juggernaut and the former mayor of Cleveland, and he would win elections by a ridiculous margin. He won every county in 2004 uh, in the general. Moreno has done that, it seems, if the trends continue for the way the votes have been counted in the primary here. So we'll we'll see. Um, I, I know John Kasich got close. He lost two like counties that usually are, I think one of them is a really pro-Trump county now, ironically enough. Um, that county actually voted for DeWine four years later, the one in eastern Ohio. But he was going up against somebody who had a massive scandal as an incumbent governor. Won by a lot, we know that, but he didn't even win every county in the general. So that's uh, it for Super Chats. Everybody like the stream down below. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button as well. We got a long way to go. We have a long way to go, folks. We do. We're uh, only at 8.30 in in Central Time. We still have Arizona, but uh, we did call Ohio for Trump and Bernie Moreno. And hopefully we get to do the same thing in about seven and a half months from now and the uh, the low IQ rhinos will cope. But hit that subscribe button so we can hit 175K hopefully tonight. We'll see. Let's go back to Illinois. Let's go back to the down ballot race. Mike Bost, any new updates? Well, he's down even further. This is a 5.8% ball game. Mike Bost only leads by 2,500 votes or so as more votes have been reported. Darren Bailey, he continues to grow or he continues to shrink boss margin and he shrinks it even further. It's a five-point race right here, right now as more counties come in and Darren Bailey is shrinking down that margin. He is narrowing it down to five points. This could end up being a nail-biter. We still have ways to go, but this could be a nail-biter. And he gains even more. He gains even more. That margin is just down to 4.6 percentage points. And I think those votes are coming in from counties that Mike Bost is currently winning too. I think this is like part of Bailey's old state Senate district. That's kind of why it's coming in the way it is. But wow, you're seeing that there. And that's without a Trump endorsement. 
He's doing it without the Trump endorsement. Trump made the mistake of endorsing Mike Bost. I don't even think he knew Darren Bailey was running or he got bad intel or something. Or maybe he just thought that Mike Bost was going to win the primary regardless, which will make it frustrating if Darren Bailey ends up uh, falling short. But still, this is absolutely huge. Let's go back to Ohio. And Bernie Moreno, it seems like, yeah, Wood County flipped. Wood County is flipped. Hamilton's about to flip. Uh, Guernsey will flip. Giauge is about to flip. Oh, that's razor thin. Cleveland is the only holdover. So we'll see what happens. But Moreno is, is just destroying Dolan. I'm surprised he's doing this well. But I think that there's only one man you can really look to as the explanation. And it's Donald Trump. You know, Donald Trump gets to play this as a victory card. Oh, my guy was down. I did a rally for him. You know, oh, all this controversy, the bloodbath comment, all this nonsense. Did it matter? No. And yeah, it's a primary, but we got a long, long way to go. We got a long way to go. Um, yep, Illinois Trump's about to crack 80%. Surprisingly, he hasn't yet in Ohio. I don't know why that is. is. Is it just the early vote, the crossovers? What's going on? Did Dems cross over for Moreno because they thought he'd be weaker? Well, that's going to come back to bite them in the rear end in November, probably. Um, there's that. I'm sure that will be the cope for the overperformance regardless, but either way, it doesn't exactly matter. Uh, you didn't really see that big of an effort for that from what I could tell. So... Let's see. Trump in Illinois, he's at 79. Biden's at 91. Uh, let's go back down to the House races. It seems like the uh, the Darren Bailey race hasn't moved much. Actually, Bost kind of gained a little bit as more vote came in that was beneficial to him, but there's still a lot of Bailey vote left. This is going to go down the wire. Hermelindo Lopez Jr. says, from Chicago, voted for Trump early this morning before going to work. Thank you, Red Eagle, for another great live stream and see you on November 5th. MAGA, thank you for the 20. Appreciate it. So, yep, we will see. We will see. Pendock says, it's crazy how a year ago DeSantis was a superstar. Now he fell off and nobody cares. I am 100% sure his career is over. Um, well, that is 100% true. DeSantis has is, is fallen off. I think a lot of it is just because people realize, you know, they see the headlines. They see he did X, Y, and Z. Oh, well, somebody's doing something. Good for him. And then they see him talk, and he doesn't have any charisma. He comes across like a robot, and they're like, well, why would I leave Trump for this guy? Trump's already decent. Why am I going to leave him? I, you know, it just doesn't make sense for a lot of people. Clint8813 says, as an Ohioan, I will help with the pronunciation for Giaga County. It's said like Giaga, so I think I might have had it right one of the times I said it. Also, how is the 6th District going? Uh, we will check the 6th District right now. So let's see, 6th District. Um, so far, let's see, Michael Ruley is defeating Reggie Stoltvis and probably is going to end up winning, even if the margin does narrow by a little bit. Um, the other open seats, you have the second district here. Um, let's see, what else do you have? Yeah, uh, Marin is in a very good position. The trump back candidate in the Ohio's ninth district is winning. So there's that. And yeah, there's five, you're down to five counties here. Um, M says, I think Trump in, is endorsing rhinos in an attempt to appease the more establishment wing of the party. Hopefully he goes scorched earth on them in 2026. I think in the case of this, it's more bad intel. Notice there says, why are you for Bailey and not Bost? Because Bost is just a career politician who does nothing and just was grandstanding in, in defense of uh, Kevin McCarthy. You know, and you have a, a sizable portion of the electorate that would vote for somebody like Bailey because he had name recognition from his governor's run and is actually pretty decent on the issues there. So there's that. Pendox is Illinois is the only state where Biden's doing well. 
Yeah, I mean, it's true. Kansas, he's, let's check Kansas. What is he at? Yeah, he, his turnout in Kansas is piss poor. He's losing counties to nobody, just like how Nikki Haley lost Nevada to nobody. Um, it's embarrassing. It really is. He's at 85%, but also he's only at 27,000 votes. By the time all the ballots are counted, he's not even going to be at like 60,000. And I mean, turnout is kind of low on the Republican side too. And you do probably have some Democrats crossing over for Nikki Haley. But I mean, still. Veritas says, hey, you should make some videos for people who are on the fence between RFK and Trump and explain how Trump is the better choice. Trump 2024. Well, we could do an anti-RFK video because anybody who votes for RFK, they're not just throwing their vote away. They're voting indirectly for Biden. Also, shout out to Sean for the one. Thank you. Appreciate it. But that's that for the um, for the RFK stuff. He's not a conservative. He's, in fact, a leftist in many ways. He picked. He's picking a leftist to be his VP or, or candidate to running mate, I should say. Yeah, Bost has gained. His lead is up to ten points almost. But still, more more vote has to come in across the board. So it's not over quite yet. Also, shout out to Scott Bullion for the five. Thank you, Scott. So we're 18 minutes away from polls closing out of the state of Arizona. That will be the final state of the night where we get primary data. Also, another swing state where we get primary data So it'll be interesting to see how the Democrats vote there. Is Biden going to be struggling in Hispanic areas? These are all valid questions that would, uh, you know, kind of point towards indicators for the 2024 election. Who's doing well where? These are all things that need to be answered. Um, But anyways, guys, like the stream while we wait for Arizona. Hit that subscribe button as well. Make sure we can get closer to 175,000 subscribers. Hit that like button down below. Make sure you guys subscribe. We've had over 5,000 peak viewers tonight. We are nearing that right now. And we've had a lot of people decide to stop by. A lot of people decide to tune in, which has been pretty great. We'll do a video tomorrow recapping this for sure. So we'll see. We're still below 175K. You guys can help me get there by liking the stream and subscribing. Uh, Increase the reach by liking it and subscribe so you can add to the total if you are already not subscribed. Because I know many of you guys are, but many are not. So we'll see. We'll see how well Trump does uh, in the early vote as well. Because is Haley doing well in Maricopa County in the early vote? That's a question. Now, she's not going to win it, but percentage-wise, is she cracking 30 or 40? Because that would mean that, oh, well, you know, Trump may be in trouble, but I don't think he's going to be in trouble. I don't think he'll be in trouble. By the way, this county's a glitch. On Decision Desk, Trump is winning it with like 80% of the vote. It's annoying. I get it. It's annoying, but they're going to have to fix it at some point. So there's that. Oscar Omar Hernandez says, thanks for the coverage. Well, thank you for the super chat. Douglas Coin for $50 says, I live in Cleveland, and it's pronounced Geauga County. So that was a little bit different from the other pronunciation that the super chatter sent. But because you sent more, we're going to go with your pronunciation, Geauga County. Uh, unless I just read the other super chat wrong, which is also possible. But Geauga Moreno with 50% of the primary vote so far. Uh, Sean M says, Giaga or Giaga. I'll say Giaga is the right pronunciation for Giaga as I live near there. So thank you, Sean, and thank you to Douglas Coyne for the $50 super chat there. So, I don't know which way is correct. I think I'll go with Douglas's way. I think they're both saying potentially the same thing. I don't know. 
Um, but nevertheless, it's one county. It's one county, and it's probably going to go for Moreno at the end of the day. So there's that. But yeah, Moreno is doing well across the board. You can't even say it's ticket splitting if he's doing best in 80% counties and you have you know crossover voting for for uh, Moreno to like sink him because I'm sure they'll come up with that theory too, but it doesn't hold up because there's not enough to prove it because those would be the same people that would vote for Nikki Haley. I'm sure a lot of these people probably voted for Dolan. Howard Dibble. For the 10, thank you, Howard. Appreciate it. This was Donald Trump. This was Donald Trump going out there and pulling somebody, not just across the finish line, but catapulting them like we haven't seen since like 2020 primaries. Ben says, as an Ohio, and I can confirm it's Giaga. I, you know, it depends. If you're using G, is it G? And if you're using J, is that when it becomes G? I don't know. It's confusing. And then this guy says, yep, it's G like the G in, in GIF. But some people are confused if they're pronouncing it GIF or JIF. It's just very, very confusing to a lot of people. Um, Illinois. We'll go back to Illinois. Yeah, it looks like Boss has taken a 10-point lead. It's not over. Ben sent two. He said, G. Um, Sean M says, yes, you did say it right. The, the G is pronounced like G Wiz. So we are going with G Aga, indeed. Thank you for clarifying, Sean. Um, but we are 13 minutes away. We're 13 minutes away from Arizona, the final state of the night. Andrew Broadwater says Hogan for Maryland Senate. I'm not a fan of Hogan, but he is the only option that can make it close and help out down ballot. And also, we would probably never have to hear from him again, too. So there's that. Oh, they changed the map? They changed the map? Did they change it? Yes, they did. Now Haley is down to 14.5% as Holmes County has been changed to a Trump lead of nearly 3,000 total votes. So there you go. What about Kansas? Let's check Kansas. Kansas is still Kansas. I mean, it's getting more red as it fills in. The one county that was light Trump is now dark Trump. So Trump is winning Kansas. It was a very low turnout race, it seems like, on both sides in the state of Kansas. But Trump's still doing better than Biden, Haley, and all the other options combined. So there you go. But yeah, um, we'll go back. Florida, I think, is all the way done. They're still technically counting ballots. And I think Santa Rosa is the only county that hasn't reported any. But uh, yep, Donald Trump with a big win in Florida. Easy victory there. 80% of the vote there close to 80 in Illinois, in an open primary in Illinois, which you think that'd be weaker because it is a blue state. Ohio, he's around there in the open primary there. Again, you had a lot of early voting in all these states, which is partially why um, you saw, uh, you know, Haley do better than I think some people expected. Because like election day votes in Georgia... She didn't even get 5%. So there's that. Stephen Kanizek says, most important question of the night, did Drew Carey vote Moreno or Dolan Cleveland? I have no idea. Um, Brian Watson for $50 says, hey, Rep, just logged on to see the good news out of Ohio with Moreno. Hopefully it's going well all around this evening. It's looking pretty uh, pretty good. Trooper FN. 2525 says like Fawny says it's if it's a, a G, if it's a G you get a G Geauga County thank you for the super chat a lot of super chats just correcting the correcting the pronunciation record tonight but hey I can't say it's entirely a bad thing if you guys want to pay me to correct my speaking it is what it is um, but I appreciate the support regardless. So Arizona, we have nothing. Polls close in nine minutes. I might get more water before we start Arizona. Kansas, 
74% of the uh, vote so far is now going to Trump. So he's getting in the mid to high 70s across the board, it seems. Uh, Florida, he cracked 80. Ohio, when it's all said and done, he's probably going to crack 80. Again, good portion of this was early vote, probably about a third. I think in Ohio it was like 25%-ish was early vote in total. I think there were 250,000 people voting early. So there is that. I'm not saying that's where all of Haley's margin comes from, but it's where a good portion of it is. Dragon Fam Tim, uh, Dragon Fan Tim says, keep up the good work, Red Eagle, go Trump 24. Thank you for the super chat. Saga says, I know off topic, but thoughts on Lions free agency? I thought it was great. I mean, I, it started off a little slow. You lose Jonah Jackson, but then you replace him with a Pro Bowl guard. You uh, go out there, add stars to the defense, or at least you know above average players on every level. Yeah, not spending a lot of money, but you know just getting it done efficiently. It's, it's pretty good. GJ says Larry Hogan is tyrant rhino trash. He totally shut down our state in 2020. Oh, I know. There's no question about that, but it's not like anybody else is going to win Maryland, and it's not like Larry Hogan's even going to win Maryland, but um, there are down-ballot effects. Just he better not be getting any money uh, from the national RNC. I'll say that much. Mike Camzo, too, says, what kind of message does the, R does the Moreno margin send to the DNC or affect their strategy in Ohio? Well, they're probably celebrating, but it doesn't mean that they're right. I'm sick of this notion. Well, a, a Democrat... Uh, and yeah, Guernsey County just flipped, by the way. But you look at it and it's like, oh, well, uh, a Democrat is supporting Moreno because he thinks he's weaker. Doesn't mean Moreno's guaranteed to lose the general election, though. But, you know, they shouldn't meddle in primaries, in my opinion. But if they're going to be doing it, get the better candidate across the finish line in a red state because they think it raises their chances of victory when it doesn't, okay, fine. The DNC is dumb. I mean, it's the way it is. You know, Moreno is a Trump-aligned candidate. That's usually a good fit. Yep, and now Cuyahoga County is now a four-point race. So, yeah, Dolan might lose every county. He might. I don't know how it affects their strategy, but like I said, they're going to be smug. So maybe in a in a bad way. Who knows? Andrew Mortensen says, right before Arizona comes in, what do you predict the margins to be for Trump? Love you, brother. Also, screw the Haley Beta Male supporters. It depends. You probably had some of the more McCain types voting and voting early for Haley. So I don't know. Trump probably gets around the margin he's getting across the board tonight. I really think so. The Apollo TD says hard water or soft water. Why not both? Hard water's ice. So, you know, it's good to mix them together. Mitchell Ryan says, can Trump win if he's bankrupt? Yeah, his campaign's not in as much financial turmoil as they say it's in. Biden has a fundraising advantage, but he always did, and that didn't necessarily mean that it was enough on its own to pull him across the finish line. So Trump gains more votes, and it seems like Dolan keeps losing votes. Uh, Hardin County, Dolan still leads in, but that's 27% of the vote. He's almost certain to lose that because every county bordering it, he's getting trounced in. So there's that. Um, seems like we need more water and I think we're going to have to take a quick break just to get more water as we will. Um, but I will be back. Yeah. Bailey narrowed the margin again to an eight point race. So we'll see what happens. We have a lot of vote left to count. It's still possible that Mike boss could go down. We have yet to see. Kansas, Trump is nearing 75% uh, of the vote. So without further ado, I am going to teleport away, get more water. I'll be back and we will watch the results out of Arizona.
Without further ado, we are back. We have just appeared out of nowhere. We have teleported back in. And, well, let's see. We have more uh, Super Chats. Bruce Rice gifted five memberships. Thank you, Bruce. The Apollo TD says the hardness of water is determined primarily uh, by the amount of calcium and magnesium it contains. Soft water usually has a lower pH number. I didn't know that. I didn't know the certain designation. But um, let's check this. Let's check it. Um, yeah, there's only two counties left. Harden's going to flip. Cuyahoga's a be, you know, probably going to flip. So there's that. That is huge. Super Dog Lover 567 says FWPD issued a vague X statement about not enforcing the Arresting Illegals Act here in Texas. The Supreme Court just upheld it. Um, what did you think? Well, that's that's a disaster. Um, that's that's a disaster if they're not going to be arresting these people and, and getting them out of the country. They should be. They should have Border Patrol in all these places. Here's the deal, though. Um, I did see them in terms of the Supreme Court and what they did today, they actually uh, seemingly did a reversal and sided with the Texas law. So that was that was surprising. And hopefully that leads to more people getting arrested and taken out of the country because somebody has to fix this crisis and it's not the current uh, president, clearly. So let's see. Um, Pendox says Biden winning in... I, I, Ipsis by five. Is that true? Because I, I saw their poll. Um, they released a poll f like not even a week ago that had Biden up by two in the popular vote. So by five, are you sure that's accurate or is that not the correct sample you're referring to? Um, Lizzie Smith Jones says, please start rallies in New York again and again. Well, we'll see. Um, CCM28 is Alex Stein for Trump's press secretary. We hear a lot of these names, and while it's not likely, it probably would be entertaining to watch. So yeah, Bernie Moreno winning a statement victory with a ridiculous primary turnout. That's just absolutely incredible to see uh, in this primary. We'll see if this momentum carries over. I think there's a very good chance that it would. Uh, Jim Renacci did have a similar margin of victory, but, I mean, he lost counties all over the state. He didn't have a set, um, you know, coalition, and he didn't have any money. He ran an awful campaign. He still only lost by a respectable margin, all things considered. The race voted to the right of the country uh, did in 2018, but still— um, let's see. And polls have closed in Arizona. They've closed in Arizona. We are awaiting our first results. We don't have any results in yet, but the final state of the night on Super Tuesday 3, the final Super Tuesday, uh, for the most part, uh, until June, I guess. There's like five primaries in one day, Super June's Day, some people call it. But in terms of the official Super Tuesday, this is the third Super Tuesday, the final one. We're still going to have other primaries, but um, that's why this is so important. So like the stream, subscribe down below uh, as well. There's that. We are getting closer and closer to 175,000 subscribers. We want to hit our goal. We want to hit 200K. We want to shove it to the election mafia and all the rep haters and doubters and rhinos and neocons and uh, people that are just sabotaging this election or at least are trying to sabotage this election. There's that. And also someone said in chat Trump wasn't on the ballot in 2018. That's also important. Trump wasn't on the ballot in 2018, which definitely held back Renacci, who's just also not that strong of a candidate. I think that the results spoke for themselves. But Moreno is winning every single county with a clear um, coalition that's winning across the board, completely across the board. Um, absolutely. Let's check the uh, other Senate primaries. They called it for Derek Marin. 
Um, let's see. Kevin Coughlin won the 13th district. The 6th district is, is getting closer. We'll see what happens. 85% of the vote is in, but we have yet to see what's about to happen. On top of that, we get more votes in from the Illinois primary, and Mike Boss still winning by 10 so far. So there is that. Uh, Trump expands his lead as more votes come in. In Illinois and the state of Ohio, he won every county tonight, period, it seems, uh, winning big across the board, even taking Johnson County, Kansas, with 67% of the vote, a county that's moved away from Republicans. Patrick Taylor says, what do you mean when you say rhino? It means Republican in name only. M says ACB's proof why women shouldn't be on the court. Well, or she could just vote properly. She could rule properly. Um, I mean, does she rule the way she does because she gets emotional? Is it possible? It might be. I mean, she is very uh, motivated by emotion when it comes to the whole like uh, BLM stuff, it seems, given some things that she's ruled on. Um, but uh, not affirmative action, but there was some other stuff back in the day, the vaccine stuff, um, immigration. There are, there are question marks about There were always question marks about uh, ACB in particular and how she was, was uh, ruling. I think she's not as strong as people uh, wanted her to be. Is she better than Ruth Bader Ginsburg on the, uh, in the rulings? Absolutely, but still. Robbie France, thank you for the three we're still waiting on results in the state of Arizona. So we will see what happens in November in Ohio. Republic Messenger says, Lickman predicting a Biden win, good economy, no social unrest, and good foreign policy. Yeah, I mean, two of those three things are just bald-faced lies to about a good 70% of the population. Nobody likes Biden's economic policy. Nobody likes Biden's foreign policy. Social unrest, I mean, you don't have any... That's true that we can point to, but still crime is still out of control, much higher than it was during the Trump years aside from 2020. It hasn't gone down. That's the main problem. And reporting is down for crime too. Reporting is down across the board, even from 2020, but crime still hasn't gone down a substantial amount despite reporting going down, which means that crime is likely going up. So there's that. Yeah, I think ACB is disappointing because you had so many people hyping her up to be, oh, she's going to be like a, a female Clarence Thomas. And at the time, even I was saying, you know, there are worse picks, but I wouldn't say that she'd be like the best option. People yelled at me for that. You know, I was going back and forth. There were other options that Trump could have picked at the time. And he picked her and I was like, OK, well, it's exciting. You have a new conservative uh, Supreme Court judge on the court. I mean, a justice, you have a, uh, you know, a legacy that you're leaving behind. And what really happened just, you know, ended up being a little bit disappointing. Kavanaugh is also a disappointment. So I don't think it's just, oh, she's a woman. That's why she's ruling this way. Um, because Kavanaugh also has been a major disappointment, unless you want to say Kavanaugh and designate him as a woman too. And that's perfectly fine with me. But, you know, people were defending him because they had to, because he was, uh, uh, just a target of a witch hunt, of baseless allegations from a crazy person. He had to defend himself. He did defend himself from them well. He won, but that didn't mean that he was going to be some staunch, you know, conservative uh, Supreme Court justice. Is he to the right of center? Yes. Is he to the right of his predecessor? Yes. But is he like a staunch conservative? Not necessarily, which is a problem. But yeah, Biden across the board in rural Ohio, he is struggling. And that is a major, major thing there. So let's see. Bernie Moreno, he's getting closer to 50. We need Cleveland to flip. We need Cleveland to flip. We're waiting on Arizona. We don't have any results, but the polls are closing. Um, the polls are closing in Arizona. Hopefully we don't have to wait an hour to get results. Hopefully we get our results pretty shortly here. I was told from certain reports that they would be reporting the votes earlier than they did during 2022, but still it's Arizona. We understand that Arizona is not the most efficient to say the very least regarding how they report election results. It takes them weeks to count the ballots and, you know, 
a lot of people get agitated as well. And for some, there's some things that need to be looked into and they have been looked into, but nothing gets done about it. Although they did pass an election integrity bill, even though they were able to basically trick Katie Hobbs into doing it, they, they got it done. Logan Leroy for 10 says, Hey, Rep, I know you're big on primary coverage, but the real important vote coming up is in Jackson County, Missouri, deciding whether or not to extend their sales tax to fund the Chiefs or the Royals or Chiefs and Royals on April 2nd. Well, that also is important because, I mean, they're they're doing some deals there where they might rebuild or they might build another stadium for the Royals. They don't know what's going to happen um, and they're far from downtown. I've been to the Chiefs Stadium for a game. I've never been to the uh, I've never been to the Royal Stadium, but you have these two stadiums. It's a nice area. It's a nice complex, in my opinion. A little bit outdated, arguably, but still nice. A great atmosphere at Arrowhead, even as a, a visiting fan. But uh, now they're saying they might, you know, move the Royals out of town. I don't know what's going to happen on that front. I probably would not say I'm the number one expert on that. I've, I've kept up to tabs more than most, though. Walk Talk 21 says Putin wins in Russia. Must have colluded with himself. Yeah, honestly, and, and the tactics that he's used to, in his presidential election to silence dissent Probably he's ta he's got to be looking at what's happening here and taking notes because I think that well, I guess we're first world in, in the sense that we're ahead of the curve when it comes down to uh, prosecuting political opponents in the most savvy way possible. But it's only a first world country anymore if it backfires. I really believe we are headed towards second or third world status. And I think that this is a big major part of it that we're seeing here. So... Um, Let's see. Nothing new out of Arizona. We'll go back to Ohio. So Trump keeps gaining votes. That's not unexpected. You're seeing that there. Um, and yeah, these, these down ballot races are still a little bit up for grabs. Uh, Illinois, we'll go back to Illinois. Trump's at 80%. He cracked 80. Biden is there at 91.4. Donald Trump is not getting as many votes as Biden. But again, I mean, down ballot races... That's definitely something playing a big role in in giving Biden the energy boost, even if it's a little bit of a little little bit of like a uh, an artificial boost that we're seeing. But still, let's uh, look at it here. Uh, Bost is still up on Bailey. He leads by nine points. Lt one seven says, "Hey rep, since we're all on the whole super chat for pronunciation bit." In Illinois, I think it's Mike Boast, like boasting about yourself. I thought Trump said Mike Bost in the rally that he did for him back in like 2018. I could be wrong. Um, yeah, Mike Bost is going to win, or Boast as you put it. Uh, no surprise there, but we're still waiting out of uh, Arizona for results. We'll go back to Kansas, where Trump is at 61 per or 61,000 votes. He's at 75% plus of the vote. Every county is beat red for Donald Trump in Kansas. Uh, on the, the side of the Democrats, can't say the same thing because uncommitted is having a field day, getting 10%, winning some of these rural counties. It's not the best look for Biden because they were like, oh, Trump's going to lose Kansas. These people actually think Trump is going to lose Texas and Kansas. And it's like, I think Kansas is an interesting state about its electoral future. I still think it's going to be a red state for the foreseeable future, but it's not flipping this election cycle no matter what just because they have a Democrat governor. That's just just, just dumb. It's like saying Kentucky's going to flip, but then New Hampshire and Vermont are safe red. It's not how it works. Base Cats has even Shank called out MSNPC on a bloodbath lie. Well, Shank is right to a certain extent. He'll he'll actually accurately call out certain things that the Democrats do from time to time, but he'll fall in line by election day and shill for Biden. That's how it works. He's a far left activist. That's how they operate. Um, it's ironic because he's pushed a lot of those same hoaxes. Now he might be right by saying, well, if they're focusing on this instead of everything else, then they're going to lose. But it's like they have nothing to focus on. Okay, Bernie Moreno. Apparently, some people are saying he's winning. Yeah, he, he's winning Cleveland. He is winning Cleveland. 
Look at that. He took the lead in Cleveland. Hardin County, it's going to flip for him too. He did the full he did the full Voinovich. He did it all. He got every county. At least it's a, I mean, a primary, but still. I mean, getting every county is not something that is very easy to do. <laughs> I saw a tweet that said, Ohio loves Trump, so it will vote for Trump, but it doesn't like Trump, so it will reject Bernie Moreno. Like, yeah, that's how these people think. It's just, it's just dumb. If Trump wasn't on the ballot, maybe you can make an argument. Oh, it's a special election, a low turnout election. Uh, you name it. Because then it's like it's a little bit iffy if you're going up against somebody that's that strong in Sherrod Brown. But if Trump's on the ballot, I think picking the most Trump-like option is probably the best option. I mean, people that uh, make these claims are just being dumb, in my opinion. I mean, Bernie Moreno is a—I mean, not Bernie Moreno. Matt Dolan is a complete and total uh, rhino. You shouldn't really even want to consider him to begin with. These people, if they wanted somebody who could have won the primary and the general, maybe they should have propped up LaRose, but you know, LaRose kind of turned into somebody who uh, just didn't really have a direction with his campaign, was lazy, kind of like Mark Burnovich was in uh, 2022. He was seen as the favorite early on, but he ended up losing the primary. Definitely would not have won the general. Doug says, ever seen the video of of Bost having a meltdown in 2012? I think I've heard of it, but I don't think I've seen it. Douglas Coyne says, I didn't mean to correct your speech. Was just trying to help. No, it's fine. Correct my speech. There's no problem there. Uh, it needs to be corrected. I don't know how to pronounce every county in the United States. I mean, I have kind of a I have kind of other things to do. I don't I don't want to say kind of a life, but you know, some people out there probably make their lives about uh, you know, filling in these maps, making getting the pronunciations right. But the people in Ohio, it's it's different for them because it's, you know, just second nature to them. It's not like they're uh focusing on that. That's not what I'm trying to get at either. But uh, he says, you are doing a fantastic job, and we're appreciating your hard work and dedication. Bernie now winning in Cleveland. Woo-hoo. More like Wahoo because it's the revenge of the Cleveland Indians. That's what it is. Um, You know, got to go out there and and win this thing in November. I think they will. I think they will. So, yep, he'll he'll be at 50. Such a weak candidate, by the way. Such a weak candidate. So weak. We have no results out of Arizona yet. We'll see. I don't don't know when Arizona is going to start to report their ballots. Hopefully it's not after, uh, hopefully it's not after the hour because we've waited 15 minutes. We don't have a single vote. And they're supposed to dump their mail in first, I believe, unless the new law changes it. Andrew Mortensen says, when's your next documentary video? We'll see. If I get a lot of, uh, if I get a lot of things done that I need to get done, probably sooner than later. That's your best answer. So, yep, yep. Someone in chat says Dolan would have won if he brought the Indian's name back. Yeah, I probably would have even considered supporting him if he did that. It would have shown that he's like actually changing, but he wasn't. That's the problem. So, yep. Uh, Let's see. Trump with 81% in Florida. He still isn't at 80% in Ohio, which is kind of shocking. But um, again, if you look at the primaries after these opponents dropped out in 2016, Trump is Trump was like in the 50s and 60s still. Now he's getting in the you know seven high 70s, low 80s in these open primaries where there has been a concerted effort this cycle for people to cross over, vote for Haley, you name it. Florida might be the question mark, but even there... Haley only got 13.8% of the vote, and a lot of those Haley voters are more likely to vote for Trump at the end of the day anyways, and Florida's not really a state that's all in play regardless. CPTR111 says, I love your documentary videos. Please make a new one soon. Non-political question, favorite pizza topping. 
I think pepperoni is probably the best, honestly. I it's it's definitely a cop out, arguably, because it's, it's just such a common thing. But I'd have to say it's my favorite main topping, favorite secondary topping. You have your your mushrooms, your bacon, your green peppers, um, even the red pepper flakes. If you want to count those, even though they're more like a, a condiment, but yeah, or I mean, technically cheese is is a needed topping. I wouldn't even consider cheese a topping. I think topping is anything past the cheese. So Moreno hit 50. Did he hit 50? Um, in terms of the reason why I don't do as much of the documentary style content is because even though I put a lot of time and effort into them and they probably do, um, you know, about as well as your average video, which I wish that wasn't the case, and maybe now that it's election season, I can experiment. It's not like I don't like putting out high-quality content, but um, I don't know. I'd rather just focus on on volume that's informative, that's still decent quality. Asker Ban for 20 says, as a union trustee in NLAC, I've seen longtime Democrats question their own support. Personally, I've seen carriers in the union speak out. Florida is a microcosm to the labor issue the Dems seem to fail to capitalize on. Well, Florida is not even a state that most people think of and they think of industry. So that's, that's an interesting uh, tidbit as well. If even if it's a problem in places like that, it's, it's definitely even bigger in a place like Ohio or Michigan. Common sense is Arizona is not reporting until 11. Well, that's what they did last year, but I, I didn't know. That's what they were doing again. So we'll wait and see. Uh, we're probably not going to cover all of Arizona if that's the case. We still have other races to watch. Uh, Illinois. Yeah, I think Boss is going to pull off a victory there, sadly. Ohio, Trump got his guy across the finish line. Ohio's going to have the best Senate delegation in the nation, but we got to get out and vote in November. Make it happen. I never understood the argument. We're going to dunk on a lot of people this November if um, Moreno wins, regardless of what happens. So let's see. Still nothing out of Arizona. Nothing out of the Democrat side of Arizona. Kansas, Trump, still, again, nothing's moving. So instead of frantically, you know, flipping between these uh flipping between these states we could just look in chat interact with the chat i'll take super chats first and foremost and uh we'll wait and see as more results begin to hopefully pour in shortly we're 20 minutes past the hour so hopefully we can get more results in sooner than later Let's see. I'm a teamster in Illinois, and the rank and file is 90% Trump easily. Yeah, I mean, I think that even, was it them or was it another group that was starting to donate to the RNC? A union group was. Which was really something that came out of left field. But, yep, Donald Trump with you know, 800,000 votes. He's going to crack 900,000 in Ohio. You can go back and you could look at the 2016 Ohio Republican primary and you could see how many votes were cast there. Trump didn't even win that primary. He got 700,000 votes. Kasich won that with a lot of crossovers, among other things. And then Donald Trump got 713,000 in 2020, Biden, I think, got around that number. Trump has crossed that number. Biden's at 391,000. He's not even probably going to hit 500,000 when it's all said and done. Walk Talk 21 says, Polk or Cleveland, who is the much better Democrat? I like both uh, in terms of Democrat presidents, but I think Polk was... Um, Polk was my favorite because just he did so much for for manifesting destiny, as as people will say. I mean, he expanded this country so much with his efforts, and you know what he did? He just said, you know what? I did it all in one term. I'm going to kick my feet back up. I'm going to retire, 
And I think Polk is probably one of the most underrated presidents of all time, just based off of what he was able to accomplish in the time he did it. He, he, he gave us the country we have today. He manifested destiny. That's what he did. He put it into action. So there was that. But uh, if Trump goes out there and he pulls a Grover Cleveland, Grover Cleveland's going to be smiling uh, in his grave when that when that takes place that somebody else finally finally did it finally went back to not to back to back even though in both of those middle elections there's people have raised to you know questions but still Jager says the Herrera team Tony ratios are hilarious they are and I like them but it is important to know that the election is not decided on Twitter. It's decided in that district on the ground. So I think that there's a great chance that Herrera can knock him off. The ratios are great, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the primary is going to end with that ratio, which is, it needs to. It needs to. We need to knock some rhino off. I mean, we've knocked a lot off in the state legislature, but, you know, Mike, Mike Boss. Bailey was a good challenger. It is frustrating, Trump. Did not make that endorsement, though. It is. That will be his uh, his L of the night because he's taken so many W's that his name became Donad Trump. He needed one L. M says Polk should have annexed all of Mexico. Mm. I, I, it's interesting to see how that would have would have worked out. That's like saying we should have merged with Canada. We should have kept going to the north. It's like, I don't know. I don't know how that would have worked out. I like our country the way it is. Part of that is maybe a little bit of bias, but Andrew Mortensen says, Rep, who's your least favorite president? Mine's Biden. Yeah, honestly, because I have to live through this nonsense. Uh, history, yeah, there's others you can look at that are not that good, but I would have to say Biden. And yeah, it's recency bias, but it matters. I'm not trying to do a historical ranking. Biden would still be by down by the end. I don't think he would be down at the end, although if he gets us another term, I think he arguably would be. I'm proud of you, says Democrats stopped caring about unions when the corporation started funding their campaigns to encourage the luring of cheap labor. Um, well, that's also true, but the union bosses that they're in bed with also just don't care whatsoever. Um, nothing out of Arizona still. Ohio is now at 88%, so Trump is at 70. Yeah, he he's uh he, he probably doesn't crack 80, but he's he's gaining. Uh we'll pull this up. Moreno is now at 500,000 votes. So he's already got a key base. That's huge. That is big. BB says this election feels like 2016, but Trump's position's even better. Lickman is TDS and supported Colorado throwing him off the ballot, not credible anymore. Yeah, when you when you take stances like that, you you start to lose people. It's not like every prediction that that man has ever made in his life has been accurate because it's not. His general guide is usually accurate, but a good portion of it does come down to coincidence. Charles Sapps says, "I prefer Grover Cleveland. Never wants anything unconstitutional. He once vetoed a bad bill as governor, thinking he would be the most unpopular governor. The next day, he was wrong. It's also a different time." Because nowadays politics doesn't entirely uh, doesn't entirely work like that, but still, yeah, we're waiting on results in Arizona. But make sure you guys do like the stream. Well, we're almost to five thousand likes. Hit that like button. Let's get to five thousand. Also, subscribe. Let's get to one hundred and seventy-five thousand. We are knocking on the door of our next major channel milestone. So there is that. But uh, yeah, Bernie Moreno, he will be the next senator, I believe. I believe he'll be the next senator. You have, um, you'll you'll see uh, in Montana, Sheehy win. You'll see Moreno win. Uh, hopefully you'll see Lake win. You'll see Brown win. You'll see Mike Rogers win. You'll see Eric Covde win who I really like a lot, uh, Eric Kovde. He's, he's definitely not, he's not exactly a, uh, you know, a full-on MAGA type, but he is, he is a very likable guy. 
who I believe is genuine. I don't think he's got the best shot at victory just because of his opponent. Oh, yeah, every county flipped. He got every county. My prediction that I made with 30% reporting became true. That's crazy. Now I'm getting hit with people saying that they blew a winnable race. It doesn't really make any sense to me how they blew a winnable race by not nominating the guy who was overhyped, underperformed, lost the primary by possibly 20 plus points when it's all said and done. I mean, let's be real. But every county flipped. You got a million total votes. Now, the LaRose voters are all going to go for Moreno pretty easily. The Dolan voters probably, it might take some time, but they probably will come aboard too, so long as they're voting for Trump. So, let's see. Patrick Taylor says, who are your top two VP picks in your opinion? I like Ben Carson. I like Lee Zeldin. I like some of the names that have been thrown out there. It's not likely going to be Vivek Ramaswamy, as so many people have said. I Something tells me it's not going to be Christy Noem. She's doing like bizarre advertisements for uh, these weird companies and, and different dentists across the country. It's kind of weird. I don't know what her angle is by doing that, but yeah. This shows Moreno stronger than we think. That's what it shows. Because he's winning a majority of the vote. You can't even say... Well, LaRose split the vote. No, he, he did not split the vote. If anything, he took votes away from Moreno. Nick the Enlightened says, Let's be honest, none of these electabros actually believe Moreno or candidates like him are unelectable. They just have TDS and are spiteful. Oh yeah, it's it's all that. It's, it's nothing of, of actual substance. Like if Trump endorsed LaRose, instead they'd be doing the same thing. Maybe if he endorsed Dolan, they wouldn't be. Just like they're not trying to push back on Sheehy and Montana. But still. This is huge. We have until November. We've got seven and a half months until Election Day. This is not a drill. That's why they're ramping up all their apparatuses right now on Donald Trump. They're coming in with the hoaxes. They're coming in with everything. Is it going to work? Well, it's up for us to prove them wrong. So, Joshua Hull says, is there a parallel with Democrats supporting illegal immigrants working low-paying jobs today versus their views on slavery from the 1800s? What's next? Housing quarters? Well, I'm not going to try to like do this uh, whole comparison game, but what is true is that, yeah, they do want people in this country working for lower wages because their donors want that. It also gives them more votes. They also give them free things, which in turn gives them more votes. And the average American voter, their say gets diluted. You talk about what's a threat to democracy or whatever. We never hear about this. Um, we always hear about uh, Blump saying that some shady things might be happening in the middle of the night is the problem. Mike Casmo too says Ohio will be a huge drain on DNC resources for a critical Senate race, hopefully for not. Exactly. The Shadow Narwhal says, let's talk elections uploaded, saying that the Republicans will lose Ohio. Well, I mean, he's wrong. I mean, he's wrong. It's plain and simple. Oh, but some early polls show it. Okay, well, if the polls are showing it on election day that Trump's ahead by 10 and Moreno's down by 10, well, we could talk about that. But still, that's not the case. This is very early on. Trump has coattails. Moreno is an overperformer. He's going to go out there in November, and he probably is going to win. Also, shout out to Askerban for the $20 super chat. Shout out Askerban. So we're 30 minutes after the hour. We have no results out of Arizona. Illinois, we're 75% of the way done. They have not called the race for Mike Bost just yet, but he does lead. 
by 8%, close to 9%. There's still some Bailey vote left. It's not looking like it's going to be enough, but we'll have to see. Andrew Mortensen says our vote machines are trash at China 2.0. Charles Sapp says South Dakotans are not happy with Noam over Dentist Gate. She's also not vetoing a rhino bill that favors big companies bullying land for farmers. Well, that's also why Kim Reynolds went underwater in approval besides her weird uh, attachment at the hip to Ron DeSantis. It's like you have to cater to your demographic. She wants to nationalize you know, just bask in the national spotlight. That's why she's begging to be Trump's VP. Do I think it's going to happen? No. And I also think she's extremely untrustworthy. I just get the vibe from her that she's power hungry. I don't get the vibe from a lot of these other people that are in contention for the VP slot that they're like, punk, uh, that they're power hungry and that they are going to potentially try to stab Trump or his base in the back just to get a one up on the situation, but she kind of gives me that vibe. I don't, I, I just don't really feel like, uh, I don't really feel like she's the best fit for the slot and I'll leave it at that. And she does have some other skeletons potentially in her closet scandal wise that I just don't think are going to play out too well if she is the, the VP nominee. So I don't want somebody who is going to Um, you know, to hurt Trump. You want somebody who's not going to get in his way, not going to be a, a, a pushover, but is going to help Donald Trump. So there's that. Let's see this. We're still waiting in uh, Arizona for voting uh, voting totals so far. We have nothing. People are talking about the way the last uh, super chat. Uh, big companies buying land from farmers is what he meant to say. Apparently, well, it is bullying the farmers, though. I, I'm not. I'm not. E I didn't even. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't even feel like I had to correct that because I feel like both of it was a part of the point. It's cool. Guy Rice says want to bypass inflation. Just join the military, free meals, daily college, housing, and with uh, that, you get a home and thousands of dollars a month to feed your family. Well. There's a difference, though. You know, not everybody should have to join the military to live a, a normal life to curtail the spending by 20%. Like, that's ridiculous. Let's see. Nothing new. No results. Oh, we have results. We have results out of one county. I told you guys it would happen before the uh, before the hour. Greenlee County, Donald Trump is winning that 89 to 8 in the early vote over Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley only at 8%. Now, that is one county. That is a county that likely will benefit Trump, but he's at 89%. It's not like you have a big uh, gap yet, so we'll see. We've got ways to go. We don't have Maricopa County in, but we have results. And Trump is up. He's up big. So um, there is that. There is that. Let's see. We don't have any. Do we have any Democrat results? Oh, Biden's only at 81% in this county. A lot of Hispanics not enthused for Biden. It is a closed primary, so those that are Democrat registered that have to vote, um, those are voters in that county that are mainly Hispanic, and Biden's only at 81% as a sitting president. Trump is better in that county than Biden, but you got a long way to go. So we'll see. We're 1%. Hopefully we get more votes before the hour, not just this one county. Um Hopefully we get more votes. Some people in chat are wondering why the primary results matter. Well, we're comparing turnout. We know Trump's going to win, but we did have some important down-ballot races, which are still going on earlier in the night in Illinois and Ohio. So there was that. And they did call it for Michael Rooley in the 6th District in that seat there. So... 
Seems like all the nominees are likely going to be set. Derek Marin will likely be facing off uh, against Marcy Captor in the Trump plus two, Trump plus three district. That's a potential flip. We'll see. Marin is relatively, you know, MAGA, but not super controversial. Trump's on the ballot. Can he win? Yeah, I think he could. Captor's still a strong incumbent. It's a, It's an uphill climb from there. So... Yeah, every county is being filled in in Illinois, Ohio. We'll go back to Arizona. We only have one county in. So we'll see. We will see. Check Cook County. Well, Trump got almost 100,000 votes in Cook County. He also got his statewide total there. So it's not like there's a big Haley vote in Cook County. Let's go back to Arizona. Nothing new. Kansas. Trump doing well. But anyways, guys, make sure you guys like the stream. Make sure you guys subscribe, hit the bell, you name it. We're not done yet. We are closer to 175K than 174K. Like and subscribe. Let's hit, did we hit 5,000 likes? I think we, we're not there yet. Oh, we did. We just hit it. Just as I said that. The commander says, has Trump endorsed anyone for Michigan Senate yet? Yes, he endorsed Mike Rogers. No, he's not perfect, but the other two candidates voted to impeach him. So the option is pretty evident. We could check the suburbs as well. Um, Trump, so Haley was getting in the in the low 20s in, in some of these suburbs like Lake County, uh, but Will County, Trump did well there. DePage County, Haley got 22% of the vote. A lot of this is early vote, but not all of it that voted for her. Some are crossover Democrats as well. Um, we'll go back. Ohio, 90% of the vote is in in Ohio. Trump is going to hit 900,000. He will break. He already broke the record. He already broke the, his own record in Ohio. Uh, at least his personal record. So there's that. Sam Madsen says, who will LaRose take more from? I honestly think he arguably took more from Moreno when it's all said and done. I think it's I think it's more of an even split than what either side will probably claim. But we'll see. Oh, Arizona just took its votes away. Arizona just, the votes left. The votes have left the chat. It's over. It's gone. I don't know what's going on, but the votes have left the chat. The commander says, are we abandoning James Craig then? Well, James Craig already dropped out, and he couldn't fundraise to save his life. So uh, it's not that he's being abandoned. It's that he abandoned his own campaign. This is the second statewide race that has been uh, kind of, I wouldn't say squandered by him, but uh, that he's ran for, that he didn't even manage to make it to the primary. I think his political career is over. It, it, the main takeaway here isn't that they removed the results. It's that it's taken 40 minutes for us to get any results from any county that actually matters. If you go on decision desk, they're also removed. Okay. Whatever. This is annoying. It's annoying. It's annoying. They'll put him back eventually, I hope. We'll see. Hopefully, they're the same results we just saw, hopefully. Um, let's see. They're practicing for... I, yeah, well, hopefully not. Hopefully we get more results than that in November at this time. It's kind of a problem. You look at what Florida does, um, even Ohio, look at a regular state like Ohio. They don't count the ballots super fast, but we've been going for about three hours in Ohio and we're 90% of the way through. You have, you know, all the results are going to be counted by midnight. You don't have that in Arizona. Republican liberal says, I hate how my state counts votes. Well, you should. I think the whole country does, except maybe Democrats. 
but that's a whole nother thing. They don't have any common sense, and they usually like the recent results they get out of there for one reason or another. They still have them on NBC, RCP. Well, yeah, I don't think that it's necessarily a screwery. I just think it's just stupid what, why they took the results or they put the results in and then they took them out. Now, if they're different results at the end of the day, that's going to be a little bit different. But will they be? Well, we'll see. We'll see. California's not done counting. Well, they're done, I thought they were done counting most of their ballots, but it's not surprising. That's a problem. I mean, Florida's... Even if you want to say it's a third of the size of California, they still count their ballots. I mean, Florida, they've counted every vote in Florida. Literally every vote already was counted in the first three hours. So maybe it should take them a day to count their ballots. Okay, fine, it's a big state. And for some reason, as time goes on, it's taking them longer and longer to actually count their ballots, which is the main problem. Not necessarily that... Um, you know, it's always been this way. No, it even hasn't always been that way to begin with. Now, it is true the state doesn't matter in presidential elections as much, but you have a lot of down-ballot races that can decide control of the House, which is going to be on a razor-thin knife's edge. That we know. So, yeah, we have nothing. Hopefully, we'll get the results back. Um, we will wait until 10. If we don't have any results past 10, 10.05, 10.10, central that is, uh, then we probably are just going to have to head out and end the stream. And then the second I end the stream, you're going to get all the results. But we'll see. Obviously, just want to wait and see until at least Maricopa County comes in. Uh, obviously, some of these other counties are waiting for election day vote to come in for, the, for like a week. It's going to be a little different. But... Yeah. Now, Arizona, like I said, a lot of registered Republicans, but not all of them identify as Republicans anymore. Not, not a lot of them are Trump supporters. I still think Trump wins the primary very easily, but you might see some early votes for Haley in a place like Maricopa County because Republicans are supposedly going to be turning out in much higher numbers for this than the Democrats were. So just because there's one reason or another for that to be the case. So yeah, Kansas is almost all the way in. Trump with 70,000 votes in the state of Kansas. Biden with 34,000 votes in the state of Kansas. So already you see that. Arizona, we're waiting. Um, doesn't seem like we have any results in yet. Now, Decision Desk also, I don't believe, is showing any results. But we can uh, we can pull it up. Nope, there's no there's no results. They took them out of Decision Desk. They took them out of the New York Times. So we'll see. But anyways, guys, like I said, like the stream down below. Subscribe to the channel as well. Make sure you guys do your part to help us get to 175,000 subscribers. We are knocking on the door. We're going to get there probably, hopefully by next stream at least. But there's that. Go back to Ohio. Yeah, Trump still expanding his margin. 840,000, 91% of the vote is in. Illinois, 423,000. Florida, almost a million. So he keeps adding to his total vote totals in the primaries. He's going to end up with uh, close to his 2020 record. Maybe he doesn't hit it in all the states, but Biden is far below his total, far below his total, and that's going to weigh him down significantly in terms of his enthusiasm as a metric. And it is a metric. It does matter. It's not always the most useful accurate, but honestly, it is one of them. That one time, it says, you need to check out Decision Desk for the Bailey Boss matchup at just 2,000 votes differential and closing. But we can go back to it. They haven't called it yet, but it's still an eight-point game. Um, it has narrowed. These counties are starting to come in. I just don't think there's enough. 
2,000 vote differential on decision desk. Let me see. Illinois' 12th. I don't think it's letting me see it. Let's try this. I can't see it. It's not here. It'll update if it is getting closer, though, on New York Times. It did get a little closer, but not, not close enough. Not close enough. Mashin Hollowell says, Matt Dolan's more electable. Bernie Moreno is less electable. Polls show Matt Dolan is closer than Moreno. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean much. The polls are irrelevant when you have a top of the ticket. You look at the early polls in Ohio in 2016, Rob Portman was supposed to lose. You look at the early polls in 2016 in Indiana, um, or even in the Sherrod Brown race, they, they showed in 2018 that he was going to go out there and win by like 20 points, and he only won by like 6%. So the early polls aren't really showing like much that there is. And also, Dolan's losing the early polls too, and most of them. So it doesn't really mean that he's going to win the general election. I mean, name recognition, certain things are working uh, in his favor, more so than they've been working for Moreno. But also the polls for the primary were dead wrong and were overestimating him. We're underestimating Moreno as well, so that also kind of proves it. I'm not really worried about this election based off of the fact that some early polls have had Dolan losing to Brown by less, but still losing. Um, I'm not too worried about that. Let's go back to Arizona where we don't have any results. We're going to be waiting. Hopefully we get them within the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, Alex S says, what prompted you to try the new hairstyle? I don't believe I'm doing a new hairstyle. I think that I just got a little bit of a haircut. Um, so I can't really answer that question. Voni Maymar says, good to see you're doing better. Do you agree the illegal... Invasion is making more Americans to vote Republican. Thank you for keeping us posted. Well, absolutely. I've said it. The economy is a winning issue for Trump, but the winning issue is immigration. I feel like that gave him a leg up in 2016, and now it's an even more pressing issue, and he is like that guy, and it's going to give him an even bigger leg up now in 2024. So there's that. So, nothing is really new. We have nothing out of Arizona. They took votes out of Arizona. They put them in from one county. It's not a relevant county. You know, it's not like it means much. Trump's going to win the primary regardless, but um, we're just waiting on results. They're just extremely incompetent. That's what they are. The person in chat saying I'm going to be bald in five years was probably the same people in chat saying the same thing five years ago when in reality my hairline has not exactly moved. So that's like the one criticism people can find and it's just, it just doesn't add up. It's an awkward angle with the camera, that's true. Uh, most people that know me in real life don't actually think that I'm balding because I'm really not. Hairline hasn't really moved much uh, over the past, uh, I guess you would say, five, six years. Well, a little bit over five years that I've been uh, working on the channel. But uh, that's true. It's a lot of people. A lot of people have said that for the past five years. But I still got my uh, still got a decent full head of hair for the most part. I would say. Um, and being someone who's Middle Eastern and in their mid twenties, that's actually a, a pretty, a pretty good uh, thing to actually have. For one, for two, every genetics test I've taken has showed that I'm not going to be uh, going bald. So we'll see if those add up. We'll see if those are accurate. They might not be, but uh, yeah, this is not this is Red Eagle. It's not Bald Eagle. So at least not for the next. Uh, 
foreseeable future and possibly even far beyond that. So either way, chill out. You guess some of you guys don't know as much as you think you do. And I'll leave it at that. So let's see. Um, no new data out of Arizona. No new data. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, people in, people in chat are making me laugh. I'll say that. Uh, but, uh, did I start this channel in high school? No, I did not. I, I started it about a year after, a little bit less than a year after I graduated. M says, shave your head for 200k uh, subs. Uh, maybe at a million I could do something, but I'd, I'd rather do, I'd rather do something that's like something that's positive for, for my viewers rather than something that's self-deprecating for me. Like I'd rather do a special. I don't know what that would be. Maybe this documentary that so many of you guys are looking for, depending on what exact topic you'd want it on is a whole nother discussion. Mike Casmo too says Ohio in here, Montgomery County, the Moreno margin speaks for itself. We are MAGA. Moreno is a lock in November. Alex S. is starting a new channel called Bald Eagle Politics. LOL, JK. Well, I don't give him too many ideas. But, yep, let's see. Uh, we're seven minutes away from the polls closing. Or at least from results tabulating. I think all the polls have actually closed. Sam Madsen says Brown will be working at Arby's this time next year. Yeah, he'll have to go work in the, uh, yeah, he, he's not even, I think, physically fit enough to work in the coal mines or as a, you work in the steel mill. He'll be working at Arby's. He'll be a three-star Uber driver or something like that. Shout out to Jay for the dollar. Thank you, Jay. Every little bit helps. So Decision Desk put a county back in according to chat. I don't know if that's entirely true or if they're referencing earlier where they took the county out. But uh, apparently they did put the results back in verbatim from that county. There is that. But they didn't put it back on the New York Times. Maybe they're just going to wait to dump it all in at once. I don't know what's going to happen. But uh, anyways, guys, make sure to like the stream and also subscribe. Let's get to 175. We're getting closer. We're getting a little bit closer. Bernie Moreno did get more votes than Biden in Ohio. That's 100% true. He did. Um... Potis says, are you Lebanese? I am not Lebanese. I, I'm not. Although a good portion of Armenians are, I'm not one of those. LinRx52 for 20 says, while we wait, how did you get into the nitty gritty of politics so young? Because I thought that, uh, I thought that politics was interesting and I was just watching, uh, you know, back in the 25th, I'd say 2016 early on is when I really started to pay attention to it watched the Trump revolution, saw what they were doing to him, paid more attention, understood the, the dynamics of it, and I just felt like, yeah, I actually like this. Uh, I really like this arena. It's important. It's necessary. Um, let's see. Uh, let's, let's see. Jay says, your thoughts on Steve Bannon? I've been on his show before. I like Steve Bannon. Uh, I don't know what his main connection is going to be to the campaign this time. I know he had a very high up role in 2016. Uh, I don't know where he's going to be this time around, but he is somewhat close to the president, it seems. He's got his media operation going on. I've been on his show several times before back in the day. It's been a while, but still. Nyrenald MD says, here, here to address the uh, idiots without common respect to bring up a hairline you have everything to be proud of this is a great channel you are wise beyond your years well thank you i see i appreciate it i feel like most people feel this way but look it's part of the job no matter how good looking you are or successful you are or whatever on the internet there's going to be a sizable portion of the population that is going to try to like pick apart your like worst or weakest features it's just part of the job it really is like there's there's not a lot of uh there's not a lot of people 
that are universally loved by everybody. There's not. I mean, you could look at it. You can think of somebody. You can try. Everybody has people that don't like them. It's just part of the job. It doesn't take away from the accomplishments. It doesn't take away from anything else. So there's that. I personally don't care. It is what it is, you know. Uh, the hairline's been this way for the past five years for the most part. It's just, uh, just, the, just the type of hair that I have that most people watching probably don't. But it is what it is. Patriot Spaces, Dems have 500,000 fewer primary votes than Republicans. Republicans got double the votes. This isn't normal. Well, what state are you talking in? Are you t- are talking about? Are you talking about Ohio? Because that is true. But it also shows Democrats have uh, no reason to turn out for one because a lot of them are disillusioned with Biden. And B, the Republicans had increased turnout because of the Senate primary, whereas Democrats said kind of an uncontested race. But also, you did have Republicans that were, you did have Democrats that likely crossed over still and voted for Nikki Haley. Was it a large percentage of them? Probably not. Down ballot for Senate, which way did they vote? I mean, it's up to you to kind of read between the lines and determine that. But uh, some of them probably could have voted for Moreno because they thought he was weaker, but some could have voted for Dolan because, oh, it's like, oh, well, we'll weaken the MAGA option. We'll try to embarrass Trump. So you kind of have a give and take type of thing. Um, Katz is, what do you, who do you believe will win the 20th district in California to replace the McCarthy seat? Probably it seems like Fong is going to be the guy. Um, he's kind of mediocre too, but he's not nearly as entrenched or destructive as McCarthy. So there's that. Um, Bruce Rice says, how about one on, uh, Dan Bongino's call Wall Street Journal op-ed idea for Spygate? I, I don't know what you're referring to. I don't know what that refers to, but yeah, we don't have any results. We got two minutes before the polls end up uh, closing or not closing, but until we've reached an hour after poll closings to the point where they actually start to report ballots. So, so we're kind of waiting on that right now. Let's see. They keep talking about decision desk and chat for the Illinois race, which again, I'm trying to find. I don't see anything that that I can I can look at. It's not showing me all the, the house primaries for some reason. When I hit load more, it doesn't show me anything. So I can't I can't look at it. Um, I wish I could. I just can't. It wouldn't it doesn't load for me. But it doesn't matter. Um, let's see, let's see. Yeah, it's going to be a disaster for the general if this keeps up. It will be. Arizona, we better vote like hell in Arizona. We got to get people voting um, because, you know, if this is going to be the way the votes are counted again, we got to make sure we, we really win this thing. And vote early. Vote early too, because if you vote... Um, on election day and everybody waits, you're going to have long lines. You saw what happened in 2022. People get turned away. We need people voting early as soon as they possibly can. If they're going to vote for Trump, they should bank it um, for sure. But Robert C. Ganero says, do you think Herrera can unseat Gonzalez in the runoff? It's possible. I haven't seen any polls for it, so I can't like really gauge it. But he was held below 50, so 50% of his district doesn't like him. Now, if he gets a Trump endorsement, that would help him, but it seems like the Republicans are just supporting their incumbents, so I don't know if Trump is going to really primary him out or work to do it. He might just stay, he might just, you know, stay out of it completely. Okay. We have reached 11 o'clock. Please, can we get some ballots in here? Please. I think Nevada counts faster. Nevada probably counted faster than Arizona.
which obviously Trump's going to win it. We know Trump's going to win Arizona. There's no question, in the primary at least. But uh, we have no data. Decision Desk has that one county. I, I, I could check it again to see if it has another county in there, but it's unlikely it does. Yeah, they have the one county, so we can pull it up, uh, but it's not going to change anything. Oh, we have more results. We have more results. We have more results. And Donald Trump in Maricopa County is winning 74 to 22 in the early vote. That is big. That is big. That is big. So we have results. We have results. Trump has won the Arizona primary. We can make that projection. Winning a great chunk of the vote in Maricopa County. Let's check the Democrat primary. Biden with 200,000 votes. Trump with 246. He's at 81% in penal. So already Arizona's filling in. Trump's got more uh, votes. Okay, Maricopa County, 236K. Uh, yeah, so Trump has more votes than Biden in Maricopa County. Just saying. Alfred D85 for 10 says, your channel's far more interesting than the mainstream media. Keep up the good work. Many people are saying this, but thank you. Um, it is it is true. We are, uh, we're not paid. We're not paid to talk about certain things. The conversation keeps going because of super chatters. It, it doesn't keep going because, oh, we're, we're fed these talking points that mega donors want us to, you know, feed people. The closest thing we have to that are the ad reads, but, um, you know, people could, people sometimes just skip over them. But still, 43% of the vote is in in Arizona. Trump has uh, got a big lead. He's going to win. They called him the winner. And these areas are going to fill out even redder. I wanted to check the Democrat side. Biden is at 90% in Maricopa, but some of these other counties like Yuma, Pima, possibly he could be doing even worse as uh, more votes come in. But still, that's you know not the best vote share for sitting president compared to an uncontested race on the other side. Trump is doing better than Biden in the state of Arizona so far. He's likely going to be doing even better as more and more votes are coming in. And that's the way it is. So I don't know how long we're going to keep going. We could do a little bit of a recap. We could look at the key races. Trump getting 80% of the voters. So in every single primary that we see, uh, it seems like down ballot in Illinois. Oh, uh, it did get closer. It did get closer. But still... Bailey, it's a long shot he beats Bost. Ohio, Trump almost at 80%. Biden, Biden not doing much better percentage-wise, but Trump just destroying him in the total margin. On top of that, Bernie Moreno outperforming expectations, winning every single county. He likely will become the next senator out of Ohio, but still there is work to be done. Republicans... Uh, getting some Trump endorsees to the finish line. Down ballot as well in the state of Ohio. Trump winning big in Florida. Trump winning big in Kansas. And in Arizona, obviously not a lot of the vote is in, but 43% of it's in. It's all early vote. And what is Trump at? He's at 74.4%. McCain country, Haley still isn't even doing good in the early vote numbers. And that's McCain country, and she's still not doing all that well. I mean... Those voters might be decisive, but it's not like Biden's doing too well with them either. So you got to get the base out, got to win. You'll take AZ pretty easily, hopefully by a few points. But, you know, the election hopefully will get called sooner than later. So is what it is. The people in chat asking about Carrie Lake, her race is not today. So, you know, we'll be doing a stream for that in July when that happens. I think it should be done on the same day. I don't think you'd, you should have to wait until July to have your primary. I think these late primaries are kind of a mess, especially if you're trying to take out an incumbent and you have so much, uh, so much infighting. But still, 
We probably are going to end the stream in uh, like a few minutes. So this will be the last call for Super Chats. If you guys have any Super Chats, feel free to send them in. If not, that's fine. We will end the stream. I know that we have more counties that have yet to come in. We'll cover them tomorrow in the video if, it, uh, if they're that consequential. So if they come in by tomorrow's video, which is not a sure thing. So... All right, we'll see what happens. Donald Trump winning five more primary states, getting Bernie Moreno across the finish line. So that's huge. Um, decision desk is Bailey at 48.9. If that is true, that is huge. That is huge. So more votes came in on the Democrat side, I guess. Biden fell below 90. Interesting. He's at 80% in, a, in Apache County. Trump is at 86%, so seems like Trump is doing better in that county. Uh, yeah, Illinois, that's going to be a close race if, if what we're seeing is true. I don't know how many votes are outstanding in that decision desk. I can't pull it up for some reason. I wish I could. It's not pulling up for me. So there's that. Let's see, Ohio, Arizona, there we go. Okay, now 52% of the vote is in. Pima County is 61% in. Trump at 72%. And whatever late vote comes in is going to be heavily pro-Trump. He should get close to 80. And this is a state with a lot of early voting too. So we'll have to see what happens. So, yep, Donald Trump. He's going to, he's going to get around 600,000 total votes too uh, when it's all said and done. Biden, on the other hand, he's... Probably going to get closer to, um, it seems like, not even maybe 500,000. So there's that. So it seems like Trump is winning the turnout game overall. But but uh, we'll have to see what happens come November and when they fill the rest of these results in. I probably am going to end the stream I, right here, right now, because I've been going for four hours and while it's been a fun stream and we've gotten some good results, it's kind of a long stream to do. It seems like every Tuesday we've been going for this long and probably we're going to be doing less because the primaries are, you know, at least less primary streams until the down ballot races in the summer. We'll still stream all the major primaries because I usually do live shows on Tuesdays anyways, but they're probably not going to be four hours long every single time. Uh, but when Arizona doesn't count the, the votes efficiently and effectively and fast, it typically is going to lead to a very, very long night. And I'm anticipating November, we're going to have a very, very long night as well. So there's that. Whoever said wait for Pima, I think we, we have Pima. The Shadow Narwhal says, you and On Point should debate Let's Talk. Well, I've tried over the years. I've been over this. Um, I'll reiterate it, though, that we've tried to, or I've tried to debate him, but he's never agreed to it. And I think that, I mean, I've beaten him in, like, the unofficial sub-war, whatever some people want to call it, because it seems like that's been a, a back and forth from the two fan bases for the past five years almost, but still, we have the upper hand for now, but it's not over yet, so hit that like button, subscribe. If we can't, if we can't have a, if we don't have a statement lead over any other channel that people like want to be competitive with or whatever, it's the comparisons that are annoying will persist, but it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Lucas, K27, thank you for becoming a member. Dave M says, thanks for the coverage. Thank you for the 10. And I think we are going to end the stream right here, right now. So anyways, guys, like that stream down below. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet subscribed. Hit the bell so you never miss another video or live stream. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. I will see you guys in the next one. We have one more super chat uh, real quick before we go. I want to read this. Robert Siganero says, do you think the shift to minority groups is a shift to Trump specifically or the GOP altogether, or is it against Biden? 
It could be a mix of the three, actually, and I know that might be a cop-out answer for some, but uh, I think it is actually a mix of the three. I think we'll get a better answer after 2024 and 2028. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Red Eagle, out.